three, two, one. This is Sardonic Cast. It's not the cast, Sardon. This is my favorite <laughs> podcast because it is my podcast. If this was your podcast, you'd probably like it more than I did. That's just because <laughs> it was your podcast, but it's not your podcast. It's Sardonic Cast. Oh my god. Holy fuck. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. That was the intro the, from the from. Tom Green Show. It was a television show oh. hosted by Tom Green. And uh, this is Sardonic Cast, mm. and I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. I'm Ruff from YouTube Dog House Ruff the Movie Maker. And I'm Alex from IHE. And yeah, that was a nice way to start the new year. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, so, so Tom welcome. Green's the guy. Tom Green's the person who directed and is in. Freddie got fingered. Yeah, but we'll we'll get into that. Oh yeah, not quite yet though. There's a couple other things we were going to talk about before the Tom Green discussion. <laughs> <laughs> couple other movies, but first I wanted to mention that uh, shortly after recording the last episode of the podcast, Chaos Walking got delayed again to March, apparently, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Damn. Oh no. One final kick in the nuts for 2020. It might happen again, again. It might get delayed again, again. <laughs> like, Maybe it'll be one of those. It just never comes out. We just never get it. We're never blessed with yeah, it. Yeah, the day the clown cried. They'll just like <laughs> put it on a shelf for like 50 years. Yeah, not much to say about that. But I was having a conversation with uh, some people over my Twitch chat, and there are people that seem to be under the impression that British people drink warm beer, and I was wondering what that was about, or if you had any input on that. Okay, um, like ale. There are people that like room temperature ale. Um, okay. I'm personally I've not one of those of people, because oh. I was raised, my dad's from New Zealand, so and they love like ice cold beer, so I've always liked that, um, but my nan loves, like, she hates yeah. cold beer. Like, <laughs> so she Weird. likes ale like warm. I I can sort of understand it with ale, but like any other kind of beer would be cold. Uh, just ales. I think it's an ale thing because it just inherently has a bit more flavor over like lager. So like no one would have like a warm stout. Um, I'm sure there are some people that do. Not mm. for me personally. I think that's kind of gross. Okay. <laughs> and then one, one one more thing that I got really confused about was uh, hmm. apparently people call them hundreds and thousands instead of just sprinkles. <laughs> hundreds Is that a British and thousands? Thing? No? Is it just um, an Australian uh, thing? Because there was an Australian person that's really insistent about that. Oh, uh, yeah, that sounds more like an Aussie thing. Because I've definitely heard that before. But I don't think we definitely say just sprinkles here. Okay, good. Yeah, like sprinkles on a cupcake. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> I've never heard that. So I know. I know these Lots of sound... weird like nomenclature comes out of Aussie. So you you, you could say mm -hmm. it sounds very foreign to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's some movies uh, we watched. Happy New Year, everybody! Again, it's crazy to think that uh, 2020 is over, but I knew it would be over quickly. Yeah, I don't know. It felt pretty long for me. Yeah, I have nothing to say about 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, leave that in the past. We're going to talk about yeah. the new Pixar movie, Soul, starring Jamie Foxx and... Oh, yeah, Tina Fey. Yep. Right? Was it Tina Fey? Graham Norton. Yeah. I guess it and was Tina it? Fey. <laughs> yeah, it was Tina Fey. Yeah. Like the sidekick or whatever. I think Alex yeah. liked it more than I did, but... Yeah. yeah, what's okay. the general read? Because I, I enjoyed this one. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I give it a reluctant positive rating. I'm like, Why reluctant? There's, there's things I liked about it. There's things I really, really liked about it. But overall, it was like it's just a very frustrating watch in many ways. I'm mostly about uh, the writing, which is just really irritating at points. But anyway, let's talk mm -hmm. about what made it good before I piss everybody off. <laughs> I think Pixar always does a good job with their movies. Always? From the ones I've seen. Yeah, I mean, I good haven't dinosaur? seen Good Dinosaur. Okay. Right. Cars 3. The, the weakest of the ones I've seen, probably Brave, Cars 2. I mean, the last one we talked about was uh, that magic one. Yeah. Uh, what that the, was weak. Uh, Onward. Onward. Oh, yeah. 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 It's but just so forgettable. I was thinking of the, the mockbuster of it. There's a mockbuster oh. of it now. <laughs> 
I'm gonna find the name of it for you. Okay, cool. But like, yeah, continue talking. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the the ambition I was looking for out of Pixar, where it's like onward. It, it seemed trite, and that they were kind of stretching this kind of formula thin. You know, the, okay. The, the formula is definitely still there in Soul, but I yeah. feel like it, it's backed <laughs> on the existential themes. You know. It, it was. Yeah. It, it really reminded me of Sound of Metal, weirdly, you know, like an inner peace <laughs> sort of movie, but mm-hmm. for children, because that's that's largely what it's about. It's about yeah, yeah, inner peace. Two people, and... well, two characters together, that are on kind of com- conflicting sides of a spectrum. One obsessed with their art, and one who's like completely nihilistic and doesn't really care about anything. And they both learn to appreciate life in different ways. And I think it's like a great message, especially for kids. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to disagree about the underlying themes and the ideas that are presented in the film. My issues are with how those ideas are presented. So yeah, I completely agree. I love the ideas that it tackled. I really connected with a lot of what the movie was saying. And so that, you know, that, that keeps the movie from being like bad (laughs) for me. Is that you know? Well, our fear was um, when the stuff. trailers were coming out. Our fear was that there weren't because the scenes in New York and those trailers look so stunning and like fresh for Pixar, and then mm-hmm. going to this like space cutesy world thing, the ethereal realm type stuff seemed less interesting. But I was I was very relieved the way they balanced that stuff and the mm-hmm. way they implemented the different worlds and how it was all like set up for. The characters and where they go and you know mm-hmm. it gets broad and comes back to smaller at the end I, yeah i really like that stuff and all the new york like jazz scene stuff and yeah just the yeah, texture was, of everything the lighting cool. is so impressive i absolutely love the color choices and lighting and the uh performance with dorothea williams spoiler discussion everybody spoiler discussion for soul when he Spoilers actually uh, yeah winds up performing at the real gig like there's a yeah. lot cool yeah. Okay. Really nice going on visually and sound design too. I love the score from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Yes, yes, I mm-hmm. love that. So yeah, apparently they had them composing like the more electronic sections and then somebody else who I'm not familiar with doing the jazz parts. So they didn't do the jazz parts, even though they're like pretty much the only yeah, people yeah. advertised. That was the way yeah. to do it. Yeah. The parts in like the ethereal realm or like a lot of electronic music. And that was good. I like mm-hmm. I like the look of the movie a lot, and I like the look of those. Uh, I don't know what what are they the the, the organizers souls? Jerry. Yeah, oh, Jerry. yeah, Sorry, I really no, like Jerry's those. And Jerry's love, yeah, yeah, the lines. Yeah, the line guys. Are yeah, really they look like cool. Picasso drawings or something. Yeah, yeah I yeah. like the design of that. Th- those characters and those sequences, especially when those are combined with the Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross score parts that I really really mm-hmm. like. Those are my favorite parts of the movie, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the in terms of design, the the Jerry's and Terry's I really love, and everything else just feels like really stale kind of Pixar shit to me. In terms of like character design, <laughs> I mean. So like, you know, I really loved the lighting and color choices in certain sequences and how things were presented in some ways, but like just from a base character design perspective, it's just like, I don't know, it just feels like... It feels like really soulless in a weird way. Really? Did you feel that for the main character? For the main character? Yeah, I mean, like... Th- the I Pixar's love the just design been... of the main character. I don't know. It, just, it feels like more Pixar stuff, you know? It just feels like more of it. Like the um, exaggerated features that are, like, kind of cartoony, but, like, really highly detailed textures sort of thing. Like, it just feels like more of the same that they've been doing, and I'm kind of just, like, really, <laughs> like, bored by it doesn't seem like all that inspired you know right i i, I don't know I, th- I feel like the the take of having a like a middle-aged piano teacher like african-american guy is like fresh enough for it to be unique in its own right without sure. having to do like a wacky art style thing no i i know exactly what you're saying and i'll bring it back to be saying that like you know like i said it's i, I don't have any issues with the ideas that they wanted in the film it was just necessarily how they get to those ideas and how they present those ideas so yeah like focusing the story on like a black middle-aged music teacher that's great but then getting from the concept to how it's shown in the actual movie it's just like there's nothing really all that special about it and maybe i put a little bit too much weight on on those things but 
Do you not like the contrast, though, of how the New York scenes are fairly realistic, you know, and grounded in that way? Yeah, and very busy. And then contrasted with the more metaphorical, and they keep saying how it's like a like a dreamlike realm that is just supposed to represent the hypothetical way station type thing between life and death and how that is more kind of abstract and yeah i like i I like it in concept (laughs) i I don't feel like the way that they presented it overall was great i like what they tried to do with the movie i don't feel like they pulled it off super well really didn't like that like the bridge going to the uh the like uh the white light i mean the the sound design in that part i kind of liked i didn't nothing about that escalator is thing you're talking about right nothing about that like seemed Mm -hmm. like incredibly unique or like inventive or special just like the sound like i liked the music during that part and then just like little annoyances that you know just constantly remind me like oh this is a kid's movie sort of thing you know like just like jumping off the escalator and it's like oh i guess you can do that that's fine and then terry's like this is the first this is the first time the count's been off in centuries and it's like oh so literally nobody's wanted to not die for for centuries okay it's a little bit weird (laughs) yeah that sort of stuff doesn't bother me as much Mm -hmm. because they do make such a point of uh establishing that it is like a hypothetical it's not really the point the the rules almost aren't that important i know i know and yet they want to have it both ways they do want to have it both ways because they very clearly establish rules right the entire motivation Mm -hmm. for 22's character they have to add in this scene where it's like oh you can't you can't taste or or smell or touch because those things are in your human body, right? And they needed that scene to justify mm-hmm. why 22 isn't uh, able to feel like she enjoys life because as soon as she's in a body, then she can experience these sensory perceptions of the world. And she's like, oh, I like smelling. I like tasting, blah, blah, blah. So they needed that scene to justify it. And yet these characters, despite that, at the same time are like talking <laughs> and, you know, like they're, they have sight and mm-hmm. sound, which are also things that it's like, oh, you need a body to experience those. Like those don't exist independently of a body in terms of like, perceiving them <laughs> sensorily you know so it's just like you want it both ways and you're you're not writing it in a way that's like clever or restrained you're just saying like i'm gonna do both and i don't care how we get to both we're just gonna do both and that happens so many times in the movie and it's very frustrating for me i was mostly bothered by the conclusion actually in the way um i guess we are on the spoiler section yeah. how i really i really felt from the beginning of the establishment of the Joe character, and he kind of basically dies at the beginning, I, I was like, there's no way they have the balls to commit to him actually going into that bridge thing at the end. But that's kind of what I wanted deep down in my heart. And the, right at the end, that I really thought they're about to do it. Like, the character, the way he's animated and everything, it looks like he's coming to terms with the fact that, like, yeah, this is it. I'm, like, trading the... They establish that weird, like, earth thing but on the 22 chest. chest but this yeah. is exactly what thing. i'm talking about they want it both ways they want to do the noble sacrifice mm-hmm. ending without actually sacrificing anything and they do this so yeah. often in the fucking movie and it's so frustrating like that's the one that most people are going to notice is the very end and it's just like yeah because it's the biggest bullshit it's just i am legend again if he didn't die you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i especially because i felt even if they did want to keep the character alive because that would be a pretty dark ending for a kid's movie for him to like embrace death at the end like that would be yeah, pretty heavy that would but have been pretty dark <laughs> i i there is also the option of having him because he's he's a piano teacher he could have stayed on as like one of the sole teachers or whatever they are you know that that would be sort yeah of a, that's that's more what i was thinking it. they would go with like he would just stay yeah. on as a teacher so he's so yeah, he's still that basically would have made more dead sense. but yeah, yeah uh-huh. i think that would have been preferable but yeah it's just like a door opens on that gateway and then they're like, yeah, just come back to Earth. It's fine. It's forced, but I feel like if he had just died, that would have been a little too dark. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, it, it would be a bit yeah. much, I think. Yeah, that would have been a little much. It it also just, like, doesn't make a lot of sense in the way that they set up those stakes because, like, mm-hmm. he's not, like, on life support during this moment. He just went into the zone by playing piano. So he's just, like, really concentrated on piano right now. Right. And instead instead right. of like how they set up the zone, which was like, oh, you know how you're like really concentrated on something? And it's like showing all these characters basically in this like kind of like meditative state where they don't realize what's going around. 
on them. Suddenly our main character is able to just be like, oh, hey, fucking pirate hippie over there. Hey, I'm going to continue this storyline up there without actually dying or going into a, you know, any kind of like medical mm -hmm. emergency to get there. You know, he's not comatose. He's literally just in the zone. And now he's able to like go across and like talk to all these other characters. He retains all of the memories going back and forth. And it's like, OK, they set it up so that that doesn't happen. But maybe that's just, you know, from characters going into just birth alone but still it's super weird that they even tease the idea of like oh yeah you just go into the zone and then you give mm -hmm. up your earth pass and then you die just imagining like the fucking piano teacher like like heart attack or yeah. whatever like is it just death yeah, note logic just, i like, think you would have a heart attack or something yeah yeah i think that's what happens it is really really weird and bullshitty just like how much they want to have everything in the movie without having any sort, mm -hmm. sort of writing restraints there's some inconsistencies in the writing, yeah, and it kind of takes away. But I thought, like, the world was pretty fun, considering, and especially kind of how morbid it could have been portrayed. I, I like the the soul world, how kind of friendly it was, and, and the again, the busy New York stuff and the colors and the way it kind of looked like Whiplash or La La Land. I think it was kind of paying homage mm -hmm. to that, too. I remember, like, this blue lighting. It reminded me of... Uh, La La Land, like the ending of yeah, the yeah. nightclub. Yeah, the nightclub scene was great. I liked that a lot. Yeah, it was all, all of it was great. I thought, you know, where the movie needed to deliver, I thought it was good. It just felt like more of a... It's definitely like an upper-end Pixar movie, but it's one of the more, like, uh, just ones in the middle. I don't think it's one of the best ones. It's not one of the worst it's for me. It's one of their better recent ones. Yeah, especially for their recent... I don't think I like it as much as Coco. I like Coco a lot. Yeah, I really like Coco. I think I would yeah. watch that again all over. And I think that's better for kids, too, given how, like, this is a little more mature. Yeah. <laughs> the existential know. dread stuff, yeah. Yeah, the existential dread stuff is a little mature. It's it's and the Coco, best one since I guess Coco, Coco has that, too, because it's about that holiday, the, uh, you know. Yeah, the, except the that feels so much skeletons. more inspired and less bullshit. That, yeah, that, that right? was a little more fun. And that's, fun. like, based off of a real thing, and they're trying to, like, explore this sort of cultural angle. Really? I, I think Soul's more inspired. Right, it was inspired on that holiday. Yeah, the culture. Yeah, it was more of an angle there that I enjoyed. And, and there's definitely, like, the, the culture in New York City is celebrated in this movie, too. There's, like, the, the barber shop yeah. and, like, all yeah, that stuff. And, and there's definitely... And the jazz culture. Yeah, that, it's great. It just felt more integrated, and it was better in Coco. I I'm, mean, I'm, it was yeah, a much I, more fun film. With Coco, it, it doesn't feel like they're just pulling shit out of their ass at every single moment in the film whenever no. they have, like, a plot device, right? Like, it, it feels yeah. so much more like they had a story that was just based off of this sort of... I don't know what that holiday is called, the like Day of the Dead sort of thing. Like I don't, I don't know what that is. I forget yeah. it already. Yeah. But like, it, it seems like they used that as a framework and then built their story around it. Whereas like with Soul, it, it was just like, let's just make shit up like Harry Potter style. Like magic saves the day at any sort of moment. You know, like conflict here, conflict there. Like mm -hmm. oh no, I gotta fix my hair. You know, <laughs> just like Im immediately, like that's the conflict. It's like uh, you don't even remember that you have a hat. Like, dude, you, you, you've, you, you've worn your hat so often that it's literally a part of your character design for your soul. You don't remember that you have a hat right now, and then it's like, oh, I gotta go to the barbershop, and it's like very clearly an excuse to get to the barbershop and have that great scene where there's then a reflection on like how he's been interacting with people and like that sort of introspection and the conversation with the guy that's like, you know only insulting him because of his own insecurities like that i love but it's the idea of just like how lazy the script is in terms of getting there that i take issue with right so like all of these different actions in the script are there to justify why and how they get to the scenes that i like but the way that they do that is just bullshit every time and it's really frustrating <laughs> it's like they put no effort into thinking how to get somewhere i just think the priorities were in, in like in a different order um mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's not like a legit cause, problem because I, I i did notice these same things but i just found those two two main characters and their their like journey their arcs to be like really emotionally satisfying and quite unique for one of these pixar movies like the the way they it's, it's all about like learning to appreciate the little things in life I love is, that too. I don't know. It's, 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 yeah, because I, I, I really thought it was going to be more about the music side and the like, uh, you know, just him getting to that gig and that's what the whole kind of point of the movie is. But it, it's much more than that. It's, it's about the obsession of, and 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 like the your worth, your self worth, and 
you know the the whole uh, the zone place and how it kind of had everyone who was got obsessed by the you know their weaknesses and became these like like zombies and all this yeah so. i i love mm-hmm. what it's going for thematically mm-hmm. like that's that's no yeah i do agree i really connect it, with it, it. it is clunky and and that the ambition does especially at the end kind of make it falter a little bit because i i just don't find the ending that satisfying it's but bullshit. i do like the journey i, <laughs> I was <laughs> I was even surprised by how much the 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 body swap aspect to the movie didn't yeah, we really didn't bug get me. into that. Yeah, the body swap. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't advertise it. If they had a trailer a that was like trend. nine lives or some shit, it would have been like, oh, come on, we've seen this in the <laughs> 90s. But the fact that they were restrained enough with their marketing and didn't spoil that that would happen was actually awesome. Like, I love that they didn't A lot of spoil movies that. recently uh, have that kind of plot element. Body swapping. Oh. Well, it's yeah, yeah. So it's a oh, yeah. long running. Like, oh yeah, there's freaky cliche. And... Yeah, freaky it? exactly. Yeah. There's another one coming up too. You'll see. I don't want to spoil it for you. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it's just I don't know why it's such a popular <laughs> like thing to write into movies. I mean, now. yeah, it's like, like time travel. Like you know, like all those movies, movies had time travel. In it. <laughs> Avengers and <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, weird. it's key to the main character's arc though because he needs to be kind of removed from his body and able to yeah. give an objective look at himself. At himself, she's yeah, quite like a the scene way when he's at his mom's that. like shop getting fitted for the suit. Yeah, and he's like watching himself do it. It was almost more satisfying for the watch himself get the, the get the suit done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he needed to be outside of his own body to see to, like yeah. what his life was, sort of thing. Right, and, and then it. like for him not to be the one directly talking to his mom, perhaps that gave him the courage to be able to say what he really wanted to. That he was using somebody else to, you know. Yeah. Say that sort of like vicariously through, if I'm using that yeah, word yeah. properly. Mm-hmm. Although that scene was really weirdly edited because it w- it would like <laughs> pretend that it was like like they wanted the emotional impact of having that sort of like if I if I died uh, today I would think that my life is a waste and you know back and forth with his his mom. But like every single time one of his sentences is spoken logistically in the way that they've said that it works is like the cat is telling it to his body sort of thing and then he's saying it every single time but they edited it so that like they they literally cut out like half of the scene of the cat going like yeah like so that's you have to imagine that that's happening but (laughs) they wanted the emotional beats of Uh of having the scene (laughs) without the comedy so they just cut those parts out and then ha- added the music. And it's like, oh, you wanted it both ways, so you just did it both ways. The, right? the camera yeah. literally pans around the mom's head. And then it switches yeah, to like, that goes. perspective where the cat doesn't yeah. say anything. And and there's yeah. another movie coming up where they're going to do something. It's literally the exact same camera move. And it's oh, very no. similar. Oh, really? And it's just as confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what these movies, I don't know if they like talk to each other, plan this stuff out. But yeah, it was very similar right. plot elements. Yeah. <laughs> Um, There's some weird things that happen, you know. Yeah, those very weird. Things show up and, and the, the, the thing. whole thing, like, okay, so his soul's in the cat. What happened to the cat's soul? Does the cat have a soul? Oh yeah, that yeah, was like, so weird. There's, because there's, there's, there's that, logical there's inconsistencies gag, yeah. like that. There's the that cutaway I'm just like, gag. Yeah, you don't even think about it. <laughs> just don't even think about it because you know it, it doesn't make sense. They want to have it both ways. Yeah. Yeah, it is a high concept idea. Um, right. And there's it does be stumble holes. because of that, but yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. It, it just. Things like that didn't bother me as much because of all the other mm-hmm. stuff we already mentioned, all the well, positives. I just It's like we're not supposed to care about these rules, and yet these rules are so entirely dependent on the motivations of certain characters. Like, le- legitimately, 22's character, there would be no arc if these rules didn't exist because it's like, oh, okay, so I need to find the last thing, which is the spark, so that I can go do the thing. I've been around for, like, billions and billions of years and, like, Nobody's ever convinced me to, uh, I've talked to, like, Sigmund Freud, blah, 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 blah. And she can't give away her regular non-Earth pass. It's stuck to her body until it becomes an Earth pass and you need a spark to do that. She has never experienced any sort of, like, sensory perception. And then when she does, she realizes she likes it. She has an Earth pass, blah, blah, blah. Like, all of those things are based on the rules that the film is clearly setting up. Right. And so that informs what <laughs> the character parts of the film are. So I th- I don't think that you can just like take one of them and then ignore the other because they're literally dependent on each other. And so if we're going to even think about like 
something as, as simple as like the 22 conflict all I'm thinking in my head is just like, okay, like you don't even fucking need an Earth Pass because you went down, you got into a body in the fucking movie already. Just get the fucking pirate hippie to open a portal again. Mm -hmm. Like he's clearly done that hundreds, like billions of times. He knows how to do it. You literally just fell through the portal. You didn't need an Earth Pass to get into a body. And then that completely ruins the whole conflict with like, you know, they, they, they meet the pirate hippie who just happens to live in New York on the same block. And so the, he's about to do a seance so that they can get their, he can get his, uh, the main character can get his body back. And then 22 is like, no, I don't want to go back because I need to have a body so I can experience all this stuff. I'm never going to find my spark if I'm back in a soul and I, and I don't have a body. And then she runs away. But it's like, just go, you, you don't have to run away with his body. Go back and like, just go into the cat body or some shit. Like you can do, you don't need an earth pass that's been established because you're in a body right now. You don't need an earth pass. And then that completely ruins the, the ending where he sacrifices himself and he's like, oh, here's my earth pass. I don't need it anymore. She doesn't need an earth pass. The fucking pirate hippie can open a portal. That's happened already in the film. And so like all of these... All of these things that it, that that are going on in the movie, where it's like I'm supposed to get an emotional experience, be like, oh, this sacrifice is so real, or oh, her conflict, like I know she wants this. It's ruined by the fact that the movie isn't consistent about its own fucking rules, <laughs> and it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, it's just no, like no. this. This eh. again and again with Pixar. It's like I would just wish it cared more about how it delivered certain aspects of the film. I really wish it did because there are parts that I really like as I've expressed like I really connect with the themes and what it's going for but it's mm -hmm. just like it's there there are lazy lazy fucking aspects to the script that just like completely take me out of it and make it a very frustrating experience. Mm -hmm. I think it's a tough thing to balance ideas like this as as well as making it like a kids movie without it being like you know so bogged down in like exposition and losing that original theme they're going for is definitely a difficult thing and i can see yeah how it does fail under certain ambitions but i don't know i i do value the emotional resonance and i i don't know if i'm just easily manipulated i'm sure i am <laughs> but it, it it does by the end i do i do feel quite satisfied um through like the, the messages i get through it my favorite pixar movie is ratatouille and there's a scene in ratatouille where the Remy starts learning how to control Linguini by pulling on his hair. That doesn't make mm -hmm. any fucking sense. Do you know how they address that? He stared in a mirror. He's like, how did you do that? And Remy shrugs his shoulders and goes, oh, and that's <laughs> that. And that's all they needed. I don't give a shit. It doesn't need to be exposition heavy. It just needs to be self-aware. This is a movie that wants to have it both ways. And it's and it's simultaneously creating all of these complicated rules where wherein the emotions of the characters and their entire motivations are dependent on these rules that it set up. And yet it also doesn't give a shit about the rules and it doesn't like, you know, it's just like, ah, oh, fuck you, don't think about it. But it's like, how can I not think about it when you've welded them <laughs> to the motivations of the characters, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is how the entire movie is justified. So you're telling me I'm supposed to think about it and then you're telling me I'm not supposed to think about it. And at the same time, it's like fucking every single Pixar movie that everybody likes turns into this like schrodinger's kids movie sort of thing where on one hand you've got people like josh gad tweeting out like i think it's time for the academy to acknowledge that pixar films aren't really for kids and they should win best picture because they're just so great and then if you have an, any kind of criticism with it it's like oh it's a kids movie you're not supposed to mm -hmm. think about it it's too complicated for kids and it's just like okay mm -hmm. everybody's just trying to have it fucking both ways it's like <laughs> i don't know it's very <laughs> frustrating for me no that yeah that is the caveat it it is a kids movie at the end of the day, I think it's a really well done exactly. one. And it's valuable for kids, but you exactly. are, yeah, you are you are right in what you're saying. Whereas mm -hmm. I would recommend something like Sound of Metal or Inside Llewellyn Davies or something like that if you want, or even Whiplash if you if you want this kind of story told in a a more adult kind of way. Yeah, yeah. That that that's my response to whenever someone's like. Adam, it's a kids movie. I'm like, exactly, it's a kids movie. That's why I don't think it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very clearly like suffering from kids movie isms. Its primary demographic, I think, is children, but adults are clearly supposed to enjoy it and get something out of it because families watch it. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. There's enough in there that adults yeah. can connect with it too. It's good for everyone. It's straightforward. Yeah, it's very straightforward. If you're a normal adult, you won't get bothered by the things that I. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so it'll yeah. be fine like don't 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 <laughs> don't let me prevent you from watching it because chances are you'll just you'll you'll have a, a just fine experience mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I was. Uh, I had a couple of uh, kind of nitpicks outside of that yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, just the odd joke didn't really oh, didn't really wow. work. Cause some of the older Pixar movies are like so funny, like consistently all the way oh, yeah. throughout the Toy Story movies, they just have better Incredibles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the jokes are better. Whereas like mm -hmm. they they literally like reference a meme with the like mouse pizza thing. That when they're establishing the zone and um not James Corden, what the fuck's his name? Graham Norton <laughs> comes in and he's mm -hmm. like, Oh yeah, I've been here once. I was addicted to Tetris. Like a yeah, that, that was a yeah. big miss. That for was me, one that for kind. me where I was just like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" That was a. J I had to rewind and be like, "Was that a joke?" And then yeah. like the the hard cut right after the line made it really obvious that that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh god!" Yeah, because it's quite an intense like <laughs> setting they're establishing there, and it's like, what, "Really, you come here feel like addicted to Tetris?" Like, I get what you're doing. You're trying to like alleviate the darkness a little bit, was, but that ain't the joke to do it. <laughs> It would have been fine if he just said Bazinga after. That was a really big <laughs> Big Bang Theory quality joke. It was literally just like, oh, yeah. I referenced a, a nerd thing. That's a joke in mm -hmm. of itself. Haha, <laughs> Tetris. Yeah, ah. yeah, I didn't enjoy that. I liked the basketball joke, though. Even as somebody who doesn't pay a lot of attention to basketball, I know that a lot of people are frustrated with the Knicks, and so that was a funny reveal. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. No. And that makes sense for New York, yeah. There's still yeah. some like witty, funny stuff in there, but it's just the old one where it's like, I shouldn't be being pulled out of this movie because of jokes like that. Especially when they're, these movies are developed for like three, four years, you know? Like, it just seems silly to put in like a mouse pizza joke because it's like, that's going to be aged. You you got to know that <laughs> that stuff's going to age your movie. Yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about with mouse pizza. Is this a meme that I didn't... Do you remember in the scene where uh, he first becomes a cat and 22's in his body and she's hungry? And he and the cat goes to get a pizza, a slice of pizza. He like steals a slice of pizza and yeah. drags it along. There's a shot where he drags it past a mouse who's oh. pulling a slice of pizza, which is like a reference yeah. to that video of the, there's the a video? mouse in New York. Yeah, there's like oh. a, a famous video of a mouse pulling along a slice of pizza. So it was like a reference to that video. Okay, yeah. I had no idea that that was a direct <laughs> reference. That's interesting. Are you sure? Because like you, they they could easily have written that without it being a reference to that, but I guess, I guess yeah maybe that's just me reading into it too much. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, though. you said it was New York. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I feel like that that easily could have been written without that being like haha that's a reference to a specific meme sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, you're right. It could go either know. way, but that's that's <laughs> that was my initial thing. It's like Who oh, knows? it's that it's that meme video because like be. Disney's been doing that a lot in their animated movies. Um. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know I just <laughs> I yeah, just assume the worst things. Just references to things people like. Yeah, it's yeah. very brief and it is like a nitpick. Even even Rocket like... Ralph, yeah, it's a bunch of references mm -hmm. to video games and whatever. How do you feel about um, the like overall pacing and structure of the movie? Because at about like I don't know I I feel like when they got to the soul part, like when he falls down the fucking manhole or whatever, mm -hmm. I felt like so early in the movie I was like desperate for a bit more like establishing his character especially if they're gonna jump straight into my life was so fucking lame and like doing this whole like flashback sequence of his life but it's like I wish that I had a bit of that before so it was like more justified feeling this way and I get that like they do emphasize it a bit more after but it, it's it, it was just weird jumping right into that you know I don't know because I prefer yeah. to the New York environment too I wish we got like 20 minutes like 15 minutes maybe of like you know lead up to this soul thing instead of like eight minutes or however long it was i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i, th I thought so the pace early. the first time yeah the first act i was a little bit i, I was concerned that they were going to spend most of the movie in that kind of soul realm place so it did feel a bit longer but i did skip through the movie again today and it it, it does have a pretty pretty quick pace mm -hmm. to it it doesn't feel like it really drags upon rewatch so I don't really think that's much of a problem. I think structurally they have, they do have their their formula, and it, and it has worked for, oh, them yeah. for such a long time. And the, the you know the, the like the unlikely friends or whatever that learn to you know yeah. appreciate each other and all this kind of stuff. Uh, There's nothing inherently wrong with the formula. You can still have the mm -hmm. formula and make a really well written movie. It's yeah. just like they don't care how they don't care how the boxes are checked off, just that they're checked off at all. 
and that's what pisses me off. Yeah, another thing that kind of bugged me, and this is I'll admit this is a very me thing to be annoyed by, but I kind of wish it wasn't Tina Fey who was cast as 22. Yeah? Um, yeah, I, I'm just like so more? sick of the... I, I'm so sick of the animation trope where they're kind of designed to be annoying, you know? Where it's like, yeah, I do this voice because yeah. I'm annoying. <laughs> yeah, she like, even fuck, says that. They've been doing that for... That's, like, that's the sidekick character. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, you know I just... Like Shrek and Donkey, it's like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I remember noticing it with Donkey the first time. It's like, God damn it, can we just get an animated movie where it doesn't rely on that kind of stuff? Just just please. But you need one person to be like slightly annoyed by the other because otherwise you can't write comedy. Yeah, well, it's like it's a the only movie. way. <laughs> like they always do Pixar. It's two friends yeah. go on like an, a road trip or an adventure. This is a little more mm-hmm. ethereal, but it's the same thing. Like they, they go all over. They go to New York and they go back. And yeah, you, know. you need like an Ellen DeGeneres fish to be really annoying, or else you, the jokes <laughs> yeah. don't work. Inside yeah, exactly. Out was the happy one and the sad one, and they were going around. Yeah, it's really the different lands. Same shit over yeah. and over and over and over. Oof. But I still like it. <laughs> I like yeah, parts yeah, I still of it. Like it. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of good elements. Maybe they don't gel the best, but. It's a lot of good stuff. I wouldn't be frustrated if there was nothing I liked about it. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be a frustrating watch. I'd be like, I ah, just whatever. This is bullshit. Right. Yeah. But it's like I I want to I want to be able to experience those same emotions and connections with the themes and ideas and parts of the soundtrack I really loved. Parts of you know the way it was shot I really loved. I want to be able to experience that again and watch the movie again. But I don't want to suffer through all the parts that I think are bullshit and are really annoying to me. Right. And so it's like you have all of these items on the checklist that you want to communicate in your film. That much is clear. A lot of the items on the checklist are things that I really love. But getting from point A to point B is just bullshit in a way where it's like, okay, if you don't care about how you're doing that, then just like don't pretend like it's a single narrative. Just make a bunch of fucking short films or something, right? If all you care about is like these tiny individual moments where it's like, this is this is the point where we sell it here, and this is the point where we sell it here. It's like, great, just fucking do that. Get rid of all the bullshit in between, like this whole stupid uh, like, oh, I fucking people like the formula. Broke though. my hair. I get it. I know. Yeah, they it's don't just... want to watch a bunch of short films. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm the outlier. <laughs> Wait, this one didn't start with a short film. This one didn't start. Well, I just watched it on Disney Plus or whatever. Yeah, it was on Disney Plus, of course. Did it have a short film at the beginning? I think one was made, but it's probably just buried in Disney Plus menus somewhere. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, probably. Yeah. There's all these brief, like, when he's playing piano, there's these flashbacks to his life, like good moments, right? Mm-hmm. And there's, like, he's he's teaching... Like in the classroom or whatever, all the kids, and then he's teaching like one boy, like drums. I think I'm like, is that his son? That's what I was. No, thinking. that was the uh, the character who calls him up and gives him the the job offer, isn't it? Oh yeah, okay. Mm. That must because it was so it was the... so brief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I <laughs> that only makes... picked that okay. up the second. Because uh... then there was like this other brief flash of like a woman. I'm like, is that his mom or is that his like wife? Maybe he had like a wife and a kid that I, that is like. You know, yeah, yeah I was inventing has, like, this whole scene like backstory it, like, for him. His... Yeah. <laughs> oh right. Yeah, <laughs> he's like yeah. a sing- he's like a single dad or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, right, he's yeah. like That's... such a loser that he's like an insult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just I trying mean, to that's what they were implying, out. right? He's yeah. like fucking I have done nothing with my life. <laughs> he learns that Why does he go into the zone when he's like rehearsing for the show and then practicing by himself after the show, but not at the show itself? That was weird. It's, it's like true. the script didn't want him to be, I know, but... Yeah, I, well, I thought the idea was that <laughs> he doesn't get what he truly wanted by getting what he thought he wanted, but, you know, that's a confusing way of saying yeah. it. Yeah. What? You know? Like no, he, he's had the, the he's had this... Well, he wanted to go into the zone at the show, but he didn't. He It was disappointing for him. Like, that's what the scene after what? was. He that's was, not... He was no, like, no, 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 that's not what yeah. I interpreted at all. Okay. It was like he comes out after the show expecting his life to be changed from having done it and yeah. the entire you know life lesson there is like oh man that was great but like you you know that's just like one part of your life it doesn't like change everything you're still the same person you were before sure. that's but like him playing the show yeah, I, it's yeah. not like it never once implied that him playing the show he wasn't into it in the same way that he was like <laughs> rehearsing or anything no, yeah, beforehand. Right. it's literally yeah. as simple as like the script was just like Nah, it would be weird to cut to the soul yeah. world right now, which is Playing true. Advocate, yeah. But 
Yeah, it just All wouldn't right, work yeah. in the scene, would it? No, it, it yeah. just doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't make sense how he's just able to go back by doing that. None, none of it makes any fucking sense. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah. Tetris. <laughs> Still kind of sick, though. I liked it a lot. But... Yeah, I really liked it. It's a movie of great scenes. Yeah, I, when I... I think you both make good points. Yeah, I think uh, I, I love that barbershop scene. I thought that was awesome. I Me love too. the villain of the movie. I love how it's not like a mustache twirling, like evil guy it's just like this random like tiny kiwi 2d drawing that's like chasing them and when it jumps into yeah. the 3d world I love and the Terry. Way it, like it was awesome yeah yeah I, I love all that kind of stuff and i i do like the thematic side of it and i know it is incredibly clunky the way it's designed but i think for kids it's like really good um mm-hmm. and I, I do i do factor that in with the, the kind of intent but yeah i really enjoy the animations just <laughs> You know, you bring up every Pixar movie, basically, but it, it is stunning. Um, and yeah, the, mm-hmm. the soundtrack and everything, I really enjoyed it. Um, it, do, it does fly by for me. The visual design of everything, it's so varied and even including the, you know, the, the formula and the body changing elements and stuff, I still like it all the same. I, I give it a four star. I'm giving this one a six out of ten. Mm-hmm. It's a... Uh... You know, positive rating, despite <laughs> me spending 99% of this discussion complaining about it. Like I said, I wouldn't be frustrated with it if there wasn't anything that I liked. And I think I did a good job explaining the parts that I did like, even if the parts that I didn't like outweighed that in the discussion. Yeah, I'm I'm right in the middle of you guys. So 7 out of 10. Cool. Nice. I have my issues with it. There's a lot of good ideas. They're just jumbled in. <laughs> it's a, the mm-hmm. film is all over the place, which does keep it interesting. I had no issue with the pacing because I think it changes it up so much to where I was always interested by it. I thought it was very bizarre, like especially halfway through. I'm like, this is weird. This is very yeah. weird. Like, <laughs> this I is like so that weird. It. Yeah, and, and yeah, that is a good thing. And then it becomes a body switching movie, and then it goes all these directions that I like. Um, so it's definitely entertaining and, and good for kids. It just has a lot of... I have some criticisms with it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, we got into a bit with the plot, specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, here's my prediction, is that it will get more than one Oscar nomination. Mm-hmm. Is that it will get... What do you think it will get? Score? It will get either score or even best picture or both. It might get three. And I'm thinking it might get I Best Picture because it's 2020 and the Oscars doesn't yeah. know about other movies. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, I could it's definitely like, see that. Yeah. And, you know, obviously the Academy, you know, follows Josh Gad's Twitter account, so they might be inspired. <laughs> um, anyway, there's uh, another okay. movie uh, that we saw that will most certainly lose to Soul as <laughs> the animated feature. <laughs> Ralph didn't see it, uh, Alex and I did, but uh, we can talk about it without spoiling it. It's pretty easy to do so. Mm-hmm. Called Wolf Walkers. It's uh, Irish. Irish. It's 2D animated. Very, uh, very nice looking, very inspired, very purposeful, very character driven, great voice acting. I could mm-hmm. just go on. What did you think, Alex? Yeah, I loved it. Um... I guess it's the third in this like Irish fantasy kind of trilogy that this studio has been trilogy? releasing. Yeah, the first one being the Kells, and then the middle one being a uh, Song of the Sea, and this kind of capping. You know, okay. not like a connected they made trilogy, but like, also. Yeah, but that's not like a uh, like a kind of fantasy Irish. Um, okay. You know, myths. Sort Are of they considering it like a trilogy? Like even if I, it's I did. Not the same I did point. read that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe okay. it's not, but I think there is like a. You know, even if it's not official, there is a kind of a nice three story thing oh. going on there where there's all the Irish okay. based Irish characters, Irish myth type stuff going on. I mean, but... yeah, they're like an Irish animation. That, that, so, so that didn't like mm-hmm. <laughs> strike me as weird for like what they're doing. But... All right. Yeah. But um, no, you're right. It's really unique, especially with the visual side of it, the mm-hmm. the line work and the way the colors bleed out and yeah. all those, the, the stylistic choices of like. There's there's quite a lot of like fighting and injury in the movie and the way they get around not showing like the the exact violence I thought was creative with like flashes of you know uh, like colors and I mean images that get around it but 
some parts are like pretty explicit in terms of like showing the violence like pretty early on too like there's like blood and like arrows like getting people like characters getting like impaled and stuff right like it's like they do show it <laughs> and actually yeah and the way I, actually i can't spoil it but at the end there's actually a pretty violent scene but yeah. yeah the whole like fable aspect to it is really fun and, and inventive and they they do stick to their rules in this one mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah and i think it's really important that they you know w- when i saw the movie the first time and i saw this uh level of violence early on i was kind of taken aback by it like oh like do you want to make this like completely unmarketable for children sort of thing like it's just sort of getting there where it would be like okay maybe like 10 ages 10 up like this is probably not for anyone under 10 sort of thing just because it is Mm. a little like intense and like a bit violent and a bit emotional but you know as the film goes on it's like i'm so glad that they had those moments early on because that enforces that there are stakes and consequences in this universe it's not a, a movie that's like giving us fake sort of uh consequences or fake stakes where it's like you know so many kids movies i could watch i would just be like ah nothing's gonna happen here but this is a movie where Mm -hmm. it's like oh maybe things actually can happen because we saw that there are some things that can happen already in the movie right so it's like maybe maybe a character can die i don't know right so it really helps with the emotional goals of the narrative yeah there is a like a like a magic thing in the movie which did take some mm-hmm. of that away from it for me. Um, but yep. it didn't bother me too much with the way it was implemented in this story. Yeah, it, yeah. it just made in the in the conclusive kind of final battle thing, like that when certain things happen, I don't I don't have any mystery as to how it's going to resolve. I, you know, I'm like dancing around what I can say because I don't want to spoil anything because you should mm-hmm. watch this. But Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think what I was getting confused with the, with the violence thing is that they do a bunch of it's obviously incredibly stylish and they do things like they play around with the aspect ratio based on love it yeah yeah was it when they're like jumping from wolf form to human form and in certain like more intense scenes? there's a bunch that they did like just yeah for like yeah little crucial moments in a scene but it, it, just yeah for it really enhances reason. it yeah and they yeah. do like some really creative like framing and storyboarding uh then in a later scene in the movie where the main character's like in a castle and it's all presented in this like 2D style with the spiral staircase and everything. It's it's so creative. I think the, the visual side of it like cannot be understated. Like just how mm-hmm. beautiful the, the the frame animation is. It's it's gorgeous. What really wins me over in in this type of movie is is like I feel like when watching it, I'm seeing the result of a group of people that all have the same goals and ideas working on a film, you know, mm-hmm. versus a Pixar movie where I feel like, you know, it's not necessarily a group of people who are passionate and have the same goals and ideas, but it's like a movie that was like created by committee, like through a fucking questionnaire sort of thing, <laughs> you know, like that's what I get from a Pixar movie, but like this, it feels like something more personal despite it obviously being made by a team of people it feels like oh like you care about these characters like you (laughs) you know you wanted to express this story and you wanted to tell it in this way and you all were on the same page about it it also feels kind of ancient and timeless though as like one of these kind of myth legend stories should you know i think it's set in the 1600s or something like that in ireland but it has the magical aspects as well in the kind of you know, pagan sort of thing going on, and it's yeah, it has really good characters too. I really enjoyed uh, Sean Bean as well as the dad, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. like soft-spoken father who I really enjoyed his motivations of being like trapped into you know what he has to do in yeah. the movie, and it's yeah, like it's, it's so fairly simple. simple. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's simple but effective. It doesn't need to yeah. be anything mm-hmm. more. This sounds no, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to watch. Oh, it's it. great. Yeah, yeah. Please do. It's from it's, yeah, it's started. a shame. Um, I wish Netflix pick this up instead of apple i know I more people would have Fucking seen it because like TV it's only got like seven thousand ratings on imdb i feel yeah. like no one's really seen it yeah somebody said in my twitch chat i didn't look this up 
Um, but somebody said like they have like an actual deal with the studio, so who knows? We might just be seeing like all of their movies on Apple TV Plus now. I don't know how many people mm. even have Apple TV Plus, but I guess Apple's such a gigantic company that they could afford to like yeah. burn all that money for like years yeah. anyway. So. Yeah, that's that's good for them. Like go At least they have consistent right work, right? And people will watch this over time if it has good word of mouth. Hopefully, and, and like the like... ratings are super high for it. So. Oh yeah. 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 It's just not not a lot of people are going to get Apple TV Plus, especially considering <laughs> they don't have like a lot of they don't really have anything on it except Wolf Walkers and like a Werner Herzog documentary that was good. But it's like that's not enough to make people sign up for your platform. Yeah. Like you need like yeah, it's getting ridiculous now. Like mm -hmm. so many yeah. great projects are going to be buried because of this. You know, it's just the, ch yeah. the ridiculous choice. You know. Yeah, exactly. It's a little sad, but. Hopefully they have some sort of deal where they're still able to, you know, release their movies in theaters. They did for, for this movie, despite COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like a limited release. That's cool. Um, I also saw it at TIFF. Like, it was still at Toronto Film Festival. But yeah, we'll see, I guess, where things go for them as a company. But yeah, I connected with this one much more than any of their other previous films. Mm. Yeah, Not I that too, I actually. think the previous films are bad or anything, but I think that this was, like, the most polished in terms of, like the overall narrative and how it was presented. I thought the music was awesome. All of the music mm -hmm. throughout the entire movie, especially the original song that was created for that. I really hope that gets an Oscar nom, but I think the Academy's stupid, so it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, um, they probably won't even so, watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's a really great song. It's in the trailer if anybody wants to listen to it. It works really well in the context of the movie. Love the character design. It, it reminded me of like, yeah. if, you know that Pixar movie, uh, brave right where it did have the redheads yeah. like main character this is kind of like what i wanted from the idea of a story like that because that had the fan the fancy mm -hmm. elements as well but it didn't come together whereas it, on this one it really does yeah mm. i would say the weakest parts of the movie for me were within like the first 20 minutes it didn't really wow me at that point and there were like some conveniences here and there and i was like you know kind of just like yeah this is fine but then when it yeah, actually it like gets, get going. yeah, once it actually gets going, then it's like, man, it like doesn't stop either. Mm -hmm. It's like really, really consistently flowing from like initial incident all the way to the end of the movie in just one like really digestible, super well paced, super well structured. You know, like you barely feel like yeah, any yeah. time has passed. Keeps raising the stakes. The yeah, yeah. Just keep. There's like no downtime in it, and it's like very, very effective at communicating the emotions that it wants to yeah i really enjoyed it what'd you give it don't have to spend as long on this one i'm not gonna fucking yell at it for <laughs> 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 yeah it's just simple and clean and yeah definitely worth yeah. a watch I, I give it full star yeah, yeah everybody please watch it same here eight out of ten i would give it ten Baby. out of ten <laughs> nice. instead of watching that crap i watched a piece of garbage yeah I watched oh, yeah, watch? the next hunk of garbage we're going to talk about. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you were something completely different. <laughs> you thought I was going to talk about something. No, no. Like, oh, what did you watch? Are we ready for this? <laughs> yeah, we are. I guess we're as ready as we're ever going to be. Take we're it away. Ready, are you ready, Freddy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spoiler uh, so discussion. So my choice. Yeah, spoilers for Freddy Got Fingered, 2001. Tom Green directed and written with uh, Derek Harvey about an unemployed cartoonist who, uh, <laughs> how the fuck do you explain the, the story of this movie? <laughs> um, it, it's basically a, a, a joke movie. It's like an anti-movie, um, an anti-comedy. And it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of, it has an infamous reputation that has, has people very torn. If you look at the, the ratings on IMDb, Letterboxd, it's one of those kind of movies where it's like completely split down the middle, like almost evenly. Where pe yeah. some people absolutely Very cannot consistent. stand it, and the other side will claim that it's absolutely masterful. And <laughs> I, personally, I fall somewhere in the middle. I I, I did laugh a fair few times and passed the seven laugh challenge or whatever it is. Uh, oh, what a critic says. Is but, that a thing, um, or is yeah. that, did you just make that up yourself? A seven. No, laugh no. Challenge? Mark Commode um, has his like oh, really? comedy. Yeah, like his comedy checklist or something. Because th that is mm. what is fascinating about this movie and the fact it is a comedy and just talking about comedies and how like abstract it can get and how bizarre mm -hmm. it can get and how meta it can get. Because this movie, you know, a lot of people claim is is like a 
basically a prank on the studio almost that tom green using his rep yeah. at the time before seeing this i really wasn't too familiar with tom green i think i was just too young to miss sorry just too young and missed his uh, show his mtv show right that's where he kind of got mega famous and he was like the pioneer of the honestly the type of internet humor that is incredibly prevalent now that mm -hmm. everyone knows and mm -hmm. the jackass stuff he's and the pranks and everything he yeah. was like the way ahead of the t his time on that and he even had a big part to play on i think like early podcast stuff too like he's he's oh, embedded yeah. into comedy and all of this stuff which is awesome but it yeah. <laughs> all came to head with this movie freddie got fingered and yeah it, there's so much kind of shock value and it's about just relentless gags with you know babies being yeah. flung around by the extension by, by, by their cords and yeah mm -hmm. horse cock and all sorts yeah, uh... horse cock. <laughs> each scene each set piece is literally just there so that tom green can scream and do stupid things and be silly and do something perhaps shocking and mm -hmm. much like pixar's soul the, the the movie doesn't really care about how it gets to each of these scenes you know <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's but that's this movie's more self-aware, I guess, <laughs> in a weird way, <laughs> where yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it knows it's fucking dumb. It doesn't give a shit. It doesn't try. Right. The point <laughs> is that it pretend. isn't trying. <laughs> yeah. So exactly, yeah. It's a bit but different. But that's like, I guess... This was my introduction the whole to Tom Green. Yeah, I guess that's his yeah, style of comedy. Rough. Yeah. So you've never seen him in any other movie? or No, like, I, didn't, I didn't know anything like about anything. him. I didn't know anything okay. about him before this. Yeah, so. me neither. But I looked into it, and yeah, I, I guess I see what the point of this was the funniest part of the yeah. movie was like seeing the 20th century fox logo and then the regency logo like they're, they're <laughs> yeah. you know they're like these really nice logos following like this disgusting get yeah, horse cock and like uh swinging a baby around a hospital room just like this disgusting stuff that's i guess the funny part but it's the whole movie you know and, and it gets a little old it's like a it's one joke i i say it's yeah. garbage i, I definitely I, I lean more toward liking it than like, okay. despising it because uh, okay. I understand yeah, I... that that subtext to it but you know it's actually horrible to watch because the movie's basically like a fuck you to the audience <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically and, and that that is hilarious to me it's like the it's it, like it the funniest is. prank because yeah cause, like, he fucking hates Hollywood doesn't he so it's like the ultimate yeah prank. how can you not right yeah I'm gonna try and it's a prank on Hollywood give yeah y'all some context here mm -hmm. so. The Tom Green Show, which I don't know if I've I've probably seen all the way through. Um, I have the DVDs. It's not amazing. What I would say is if you want to watch it, put it on while you're doing something else. I built a, uh, a shelf that I got for Christmas for media storage. Oh, nice. I was building, <laughs> assembling that while I was watching this uh, earlier in the uh, last week. And um, basically the way that Tom Green's show functions is... There's a surprising amount of similarities between his show and the Eric Andre show. Where, yeah. where in, if Tom Green's show didn't exist, Eric Andre show wouldn't exist. And like probably Jackass also. Like so many of these things. But like Eric Andre show, much better paced. Also, it's only like 11 minutes long. Yeah, really sure. Yeah, much shorter. But it's like much more. Yeah, it's like it's like for this generation of audience and pacing. Tom Green show, you know, it's a bit slower, a bit more awkward. But the same basic concepts are there. He has a crappy talk show that knows it's crappy. In his show, he actually has an audience, and sometimes the audience is subjected to the gags or the embarrassment or whatever. Mm. He trolls his guests. He does the cutaway segments in between where he's pranking people on the street. You know, it's it, the, it's a lot of the same shit, although I would say Eric Andre does it better. It's like a better, more entertaining show that I could watch more times. Mm -hmm. But... I'm trying to give the context in preparation for what I think about like this conspiracy theory of like him just trolling the audience. And in a way he is, but I do not think that he set out to make a critically and commercially unsuccessful movie. I don't think mm -hmm. he set out to do that. I don't think he was conscious in in terms of being like I'm going to get Fox to give me money and it's going to be bad and I'm going to go, haha, it was bad. Like, I don't think that happened. And mm -hmm. and what really solidified that watching it this time, and I'm glad I rewatched through Tom Green show shit, 
is basically like there's one core issue with the movie and it's pretty much the same issue in every single scene and I think I figured out what is just so wrong with this movie is hmm. that he structured it and wrote it all of the gags all of the setups in the same way that he would for his show but since it was a movie and he had the budget instead of real people being the victims of his pranks in the context of the film or or any of that they were actors and that's what really harms the film so i looked at every single mm -hmm. one of these scenes and i thought damn if he was so ahead of the curve that he was doing something like bad grandpa bad trip Borat, you know like something like yeah, that Borat, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. if he did the exact same movie but every single set piece instead of it being him just being weird haha -ha, funny to actors but it was to real people then it would be so much better so like mm -hmm, every yeah. single fucking scene look at that in the context of like him yelling at the bank like if you know you look at the special features of this movie and technically he did do that but it's not really like it's not really shown in the movie. So basically oh, really? what he says is like, oh yeah, I hired all of these extras, but I didn't tell them that I was going to do all this weird stuff. But you don't really feel that way because the extra, no, the extras no. know they're on a set and they're trying to keep their composure. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, so when he's going like ding dong and he's like the salami against the old lady's face or whatever, she's not acting like a real person would. She's acting like someone getting paid to be there who knows that, you know, like this is the director just doing weird shit in front of me. I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm an extra. I don't get paid enough, but blah, 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 blah. And so the humor isn't there in the same way that it would be if it was like a candid camera sort of thing. I think the, the movie would essentially be fixed if they had filmed it in that way, but I don't know what examples I could give of earlier films that have done that. All I know oh, is like yeah. Borat, Bruno, like... If if there are earlier films that did that, then you know, let me know in the comments section. I maybe yeah. I'm just not thinking of them. Maybe there's a really obvious one, but like, yeah, I think that would fix the movie. I suppose, you, yeah, you have the two options. You can either, yeah, you can either do it that way, or I think what also may have fixed it is if the jokes actually had some kind of consequence on the greater like story or the way it was building. Cause he does like whip out a gun, like put it in his mouth, like on a busy street, no one cares with the salami factory, mm. like no one reacts to anything. And if there were consequences yeah. and it was building an absurdity that way, I think that would be more satisfying or yeah, have, have the actual like yeah. Borat style. Yeah. I had the exact same thought yeah, when watching it. Cause it, it, there are too many just the like Borat throwaway non sequiturs. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that was they his just, show. They just aren't funny. Like, mm -hmm. And his show worked a lot better. Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of little skits. He was doing the same shit, but he was making other people uncomfortable, whether it was his live audience or random people on the street. Like That elevated what he was doing. It wasn't just funny because he was going like, making silly noises and screaming and shit. It was because he was doing that in front of other people that were clearly getting uncomfortable. And that was the one element that he forgot to include in the movie because maybe he misinterpreted why his show was so successful in the first place. You know, a lot right. of his humor is literally just like weird, cringe, silly. Like, I don't know if you want to look up his uh, his like bum bum song or whatever. It's like, yeah, it's just up. like looking back at that. It's like, holy shit, I loved that in elementary school. But this is kind of cringe now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was so perfect for kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's what I kept thinking. I was thinking the twelve-year-old me would love this movie. This is this is how I remember like <laughs> the early two thousands yeah. kind of early internet stuff. It was like about the excess and the shock value of it all, and how just ridiculously funny that was at the time. And it, <laughs> some of that stuff mm -hmm. has aged really poorly, but especially when it's at like the expense of, of certain people. I, I like it when it stayed completely absurd. That was when it worked the best for me. When it was like. <laughs> The, the suit on backwards and the piano with the sausages and the scuba gear yeah. in the shower and stuff like that. They are funny on their own. And his commit, his like sickening commitment to the performance as well. It's like, you can't keep mm -hmm. your eyes off it. He's so, he's so mental in the way he does it. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to point out that that's like two out of the three sequences that are scenes that you just mentioned that you really enjoyed. Those are ones where he created like, little songs for them and that's another one of his strengths is creating little tiny goofy silly like haha funny because like it's not funny yeah. songs right yeah like he's great at that and those are just the best parts of the movie because those don't require like a real person a real audience member or you know person on the street to react to them they're just like that's one of his strengths and so that being relatively unchanged from his original show and other things that he's been doing 
okay, that works. That works great. You know, like you mm-hmm. you didn't need anything more than that. And yeah, I completely agree. Like those are those are the funniest parts of the movie. Is like backwards man, daddy, would you like some sausage? Shit like that. I did get a good laugh though out of the concept of he keeps going to this like animator producer guy trying to get mm-hmm. the job and when and the way he gets it by his dad coming in and having a fight and the producer yeah. like thinks it's like staged and it's like a a reflection i guess of how he got his show made and everything and it's all just like a like a, a misunderstood joke because the, ma- the main character he's like he's such a bumbling buffoon like he's so mm-hmm. unlikable and he's screaming and he's so like obnoxious and over the top and there is a way to make characters like that work like like always sunny is what I think of. Like they're they're horrible sure. people, but the way they write the show, everyone around them is always kind of anti them and, and they're not like painted mm-hmm. as good guys or right. anything, but that it does get a bit lost in that where like it tries to have the <laughs> the stuff with his dad and Yeah, there's there's so much like throwaway stuff that just doesn't work. I felt like every scene was like a roll of the dice if it was gonna be funny or not. And if it was, if it didn't land on funny, it... I think the TV episode format just really helps with that. Here, I was mm-hmm, trying yeah. to judge it. Like, how do I even judge this as a movie? Because the plot, yeah. the cinematography, there's not much to say. It's just, it's yeah. all a joke. <laughs> it's all in service of Tom Green making an ass of himself. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah. So I, I'm not even sure how to judge it really. Every single scene was just some dumb idea that he had come up with independently of its greater context in the movie Mm -hmm. and then he just bullshitted his way to make to fit it into the movie yeah Um, and this is further evidenced by the amount of unused footage and deleted scenes that he had in in the film Mm -hmm. much of which plays over the end credits you see like fucking him and his dad like running away from an explosion and like him like Mm -hmm. sucking off a cow udder and shit like that there was also a deleted scene of they like built like an entire like boat that was supposed to be destroyed for the movie like this whole expensive prop thing and like l- dropped it from a helicopter into a gigantic wood chipper sort of thing and that never made it into the movie and it's just like all this wasted fucking money <laughs> it's like <laughs> holy shit things that just didn't even make it into the movie and you know th- this on its own might be more evidence towards the like haha i'm trolling the studio theory but i really honestly believe that he just like he didn't know what he was doing, and he tried to make something that was still commercially successful, even if critics didn't like it. He still wanted to make something that like people watched and enjoyed. I don't think yeah. he set out to make something that wasn't successful. He just didn't know what he was doing oh, because yeah. everything he's yeah. done beforehand was literally just single, one-off, little cutaway gags, and mm-hmm. then you're trying to structure that into an entire plot of a movie. I'm sorry, but you have to have like a writer helping you do that maybe, or, you know, like I said, do the whole fucking Borat Bruno style, which mm-hmm. wasn't really a popular thing at the time, but, you know, if he invented that, it would have worked if he if he had actually pioneered that, you know? Yeah. The only thing is with the, there is a lot of meta humor in the movie. I, I, I think the producer stuff, like that seems to be there for a reason, you know, it is jabbing at something. Yeah. And then when he gets the million million dollars and he's like just blowing the money on ridiculous oh, of set pieces mm-hmm. yeah. and taking it to like Afghanistan and everything and like just throwing away 700 <laughs> and everything. But, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the, and the guy holding up the sign saying, when is this movie going to fucking yeah. end? Like, <laughs> I the, felt like they could have like, done more with there. that. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like, yeah. they could, like even with the filmmaking aspects of it, maybe something like Black Dynamite, where shots are intentionally like fucked up, or the sound yeah. is, you see the boom mic, <laughs> like that would have helped too. I feel like that maybe that movie is just so much more dense. With maybe, the comedy. yeah, There's so much more going on. If it's a joke appreciate. movie, anyway, <laughs> yeah, this movie is basically a joke. Rip Torn, best uh-huh. name <laughs> in Hollywood. <laughs> Rip Torn. Yeah, rest yeah. in peace. Uh huh. Yeah, Rip Rip. He was good. Um, <laughs> Fuck. Great performances in this movie. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah, a uh, to it. yeah, his girlfriend or whatever who just wanted to to give him a blowjob. Oh, yeah. job. The sucking thing. Yeah, that was a bit. <laughs> that felt a bit dated. <laughs> I don't know, it was funny. silly. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of. It's just so ridiculous. The whole movie's so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I like the innocent silliness like that. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Drew Barrymore was in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Um, she was married to him. Yeah, like very briefly, right? Yeah. Because he's in Charlie's Angels. I've never seen it, but I saw his credits. Oh, really? There. Oh, I didn't <laughs> yeah. even know. I saw the movie when I was very young. Can't remember a single thing about it. 
Except that fucking banger song by Destiny's Child. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, it's just completely random if it's going to be funny or not. You know, like uh, I didn't really enjoy the deer like bit where he's like wearing the that's the skin. Uh, <laughs> like rewatching his <laughs> his fucking cable show, it's like that's so many of the gags is literally just like animal carcasses. <laughs> like he'll just like get get like a fucking sheep's head on stage and like smash it with a fucking hammer oh and go Whoa! and then like put it into his mouth and be like ah, la, 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 and just like mm-hmm. wow you're gonna get salmonella yeah. this is gross and like that's supposed yeah. to be the humor i guess but like those are the jokes that's I, what he was doing i, I d- dislike the most because uh, I, I, I watched the like roger ebert review of this earlier and it's, it's quite one of funny the funniest. Um, yeah. oh yeah it's, it's, <laughs> the it's reviews really funny. for this movie <laughs> I want to read through all of them. Oh my god! Um, But they they point out the jokes that I didn't have as much of a problem with. Like people seem to be really hung up on the the baby scene where he's like, "I know, right?" (laughs) That is it is gross, but it is that is so ridiculous and absurd. It's a writ review that Freddy got figured, Roger Ebert. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a different generation. We're exposed to a lot more morbid things growing up. I think he gave it zero stars. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. He either gave it half a star or zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's pretty funny. Which is a very rare rating, but uh-huh. not yeah, not his only but, zero star. Yeah, yeah. There was like a publication that invented a new rating system, like the minus one star for this movie. Yeah, it, like offended <laughs> so many people. That is, I guess, what he was going for with the the shock thing. If he's always known for shock oh, value, it's just. I just he forgot to I, make I a funny movie though. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. don't get that much out that's of the, the shock problem. value on its own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can still have a shocking movie that's funny and commercially successful it's just he for he didn't know how to do the one part he knows how to be shocking mm-hmm. he knows yeah. how to be like out there and crazy and push boundaries but he doesn't know how to like write a good movie i was thinking of the hangover movies those are a little more tame but yeah the commercial yeah. success of those <laughs> movies are like you know huge and they're then they're like rated r gross out movies and there's been a lot of those since like after that sasha baron cohen he, he loves yeah, the like, gross too. out stuff but it, it yeah you're right. It does work much better in those movies because the the it's at the expense of real people. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. When yeah, he did exactly. it in Brothers Grimsby, it didn't work as well. Or the Dictator. Yeah. Like those weren't nearly as funny yeah. for me anyway. Yeah. No. You're Sometimes right. that's what you need. You know, especially if like the entire success of your show had that element. It's like maybe you need that, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I'm glad I watched it again though. So because like this was like my eureka moment of like. That's what's wrong with it. You know? <laughs> I never. It's not like a movie that I hate watching. It's just like a lot of it just doesn't work. No, it's uh-huh. very interesting and memorable in that weird way. Yeah. And it's <laughs> it's funny it people describe it as as, as Dadaism, <laughs> where it is like anti art in a weird way. Um. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's more like Uncle Art. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm still like I've only seeing it once. I, I do kind of want to go back and watch it again. Um. Right? Which, you know, I can't say about some of these other, like, shock value, awful comedies that some people interpret it almost as, like, a just a ridiculous parody of those kind of movies, you know, where it's, like, really lowbrow stuff. Mm-hmm. But it is it is hard to get an interpretation from it, you know, when the message is already kind of decided at this point. I don't know if on, like, the DVD, if there's, like, a fair interviews or, or anything, but... And it won There's the a Razzie bunch of Awards special features. And... Yeah. I, so, like, what are you I trying to exactly figure out about it, though? Like, because this idea that it's like in, intentionally bad, you know? And how yeah, far I don't that get goes. that impression. How, how deep that goes. Yeah, I don't know how to deep a it goes. complete degree. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's true and it's untrue. Like, he knows he's making something that's not highbrow, you know? Like, it's he knows yeah, he's yeah, not definitely. making like something that critics would like he already knows that he thought it would mm-hmm. be commercially successful anyway and also he's made arguments like after the the film was you know kind of bombed he's gone on record saying things like yeah well i think more people actually watched it than is reflected in the numbers because they were there were probably a lot of kids sneaking into the movie that bought tickets for something else you know mm-hmm. it's like That's yeah, he knows he, he didn't make something like astute <laughs> yeah yeah you know? yeah highbrow but, <laughs> but he he didn't set out to make a commercially unsuccessful film is what i would right. say i mean maybe his audience is mainly like they couldn't see the movie because they weren't old enough <laughs> i know <laughs> right yeah like, i mean that might have been it he didn't even consider that 
Probably. Well, because, I mean, like, everything he's done before was on cable television, mm -hmm. which, right. Anyone can you know, watch. <laughs> as long as you got cable. even though he was, like, pushing some boundaries there, there's only so much you can show. Sure. So now that he's doing a film, he's like, oh, I can just do whatever the fuck I want. This will be my, you know, there's so many times where it's like, oh, I'm making a movie now. I, it can be R-rated, unrated, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he went for that. But I think, yeah, you're probably right. Like, a lot of people just couldn't watch the movie because his audience was a lot of children <laughs> i think right they would have to sneak in <laughs> so exactly they don't make money off yeah. it. <laughs> watch it just not make money off of it. yeah exactly which again maybe it's an f you to the industry god i i hate to use the word like act with this movie but like the first chunk <laughs> of the movie um i was like oh no i think i'm really gonna not enjoy this but it, it kept winning me over with weird like just non sequiturs that Again, his commitment to that just ridiculous absurdity with like the what was it the like African American Greek myth and just dumb shit like that. <laughs> like it is funny. There is funny stuff in there for sure, but mm -hmm. it is just bogged down by. You're right. It's, it's way too long. You could just cut up the funny bits, put it on YouTube, and get basically the same experience <laughs> by yeah. watching it. You know, because they're not connected. I didn't feel like much was connected in this movie. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot that you just like could remove and the movie would make just as much sense anyway mm -hmm. and the, the the like title scene the, the the freddy got fingered scene what it's referencing doesn't show up into the yeah. movie till way later on and it's only really for one punchline involving his brother yeah just and, going yeah, and it doesn't facility. influence anything mm -hmm. yeah because it makes you seem that that's yeah. going to be the plot of the movie that's what it says like on imdb and letterbox and everything like that's what the plot of the movie is but it, it really isn't <laughs> about yeah, that it's really one segment there isn't much plot. It's more <laughs> no. about his cartoonist ambitions, I think. Mm -hmm. That seems to be like the biggest through line, I guess. <laughs> yeah, his cartoonist ambitions, that's right. I didn't even yeah. remember that Zippers part. Zippers in America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I like <laughs> that 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 part wasn't bad. Yeah. Look at my hopes. I like that too. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. Yeah. Some weird moments. Mm -hmm. But I think he just needs somebody that knows how to write shit like curating what he's doing Someone i think he had too in. much control yeah yeah he directed it you know that's weird <laughs> it is. he's he, did he it's like it this is him? his passion project yeah, and he did like all the stunts like, and everything everything he did in the movie he came up with the idea and was like i'm gonna do that in this movie <laughs> it's everything crazy, he the, did in the, movie. the resources <laughs> and the free reign they gave him to make this yeah i think that's yeah. really the impressive helicopter and Oh man, yeah. Well, just he like did just do this his own one stunts. guy having all this money to make a film and this much creative power, I don't think you'd even see that like now. Well, because he was a huge studio. name at the time. I, like, yeah, he, I can't even he's, imagine. He's that. a household name when this uh -huh. movie was coming out. Mm -hmm. You could say this movie might have killed his career, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe. Now he makes like videos on YouTube that like yeah, he's a YouTuber. I mean, a, a chunk oh. of people watch. I don't. I wouldn't call it a lot. I wouldn't call it a little. But yeah, he's like doing like some van life shit. He's like, I'm living in a van, but not like out of like him being homeless or it, probably. But he's like just doing it for like just for fun. Like, I don't know, like reason, like I don't know, self for the goofs. Yeah, it seems like he might be on medication now. I think that there was a moment where like a flip got switched or something. Like starting around when he started his podcast sort of thing, he seemed to have calmed down a lot. I think he might have started taking like. ADHD meds, I don't know. <laughs> like, I might be right. right again to it. His testosterone might have gone down a bit or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He he might have just gotten too old for all that shit. Yeah, he got sick of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's exhausting to watch. Like, he's commits his body and <laughs> mind and soul to, to the project. I'll yeah. give him that. We only got one movie. I would have liked it. like to... the most infamous. Yeah, like, Tom Green never made another one. Did you read about his, like, uh, Razzie acceptance stuff? No, I didn't. Oh, did he actually show up that. at the Razzies? Yeah, he showed That's up cool. and uh, oh, he brought his that. own red carpet. There's a video actually That's of him awesome. showing up with the red carpet oh, and like rolling it out and <laughs> walking down it. <laughs> and apparently, there's no video of it. I think there's a picture of it. Um, when he went up and accepted the award, he started playing like a uh, harmonica, like really badly for just <laughs> oh, minutes awesome. and minutes until he was like pulled off the stage. So he continued. Oh, that so his... funny. His <laughs> legacy like that is that is fucking. But he hilarious. loves doing that. <laughs> Like that, he yeah, loves exactly, yeah. pissing people off and doing weird shit. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I've seen like the Holly Berry at the Razzie. Oh yeah, 
where she blamed her agent and then all of a sudden stopped getting cast in a bunch of movies. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have done that, Hallie. Yeah. This was my agent's fault. All of a sudden her career nosedives. It's like, yeah, mm. then she's in the call. <laughs> hey, she's yeah. in John Wick 3 recently. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, imagine yeah. throwing your agent under the bus. <laughs> yeah, blaming him for Catwoman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, so you, you took it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no one forces you. Bank account ain't suffering. Christ. I think, yeah, I mean, obviously, Pitoff. Catwoman's terrible. She was trying to put the blame on someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot, a uh, lot about this movie that uh, doesn't work, but I enjoyed it when I was younger, and I still enjoy parts of it today. It's a, it's not an undigestible movie. I can get through it without feeling frustrated or bad about myself i don't think it's a great movie at all (laughs) but Mm -hmm. you know there's there's something there and especially i think it's also a lot more easily digestible for me because you know i like a lot of anti-humor i like a lot of tim and eric shit you know yes that's Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that i enjoy so with that being something that's in the movie like that's sprinkled in there you know yeah, I do too. It's just too long. Yeah, you know, for a, f- a film, I want like a bit more <laughs> than just a bunch of dumb gags in a row. Yeah, and especially when they're re- so repetitive with like the screaming stuff, especially mm-hmm. it's like, oh, the scene doesn't work. Let's just start screaming and yelling. That's you all. Know, that's like... all he ever did. Yeah, <laughs> that <laughs> was his whole career. That. And I get if you like that, if you <laughs> get the subtext of the anti humor, whatever. But I just, I kind of thought it was dull after, um, I don't know what point. Maybe after well, yeah, he jacked so off the like, horse. It doesn't like matter how there. good. <laughs> Somewhere oh, right. around. That's like yeah. really early on. Yeah, it's it? really early, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, like, or maybe the deer skin part when he's like flailing his arms around. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh, is this you all know. this is going to be? It's just like this kind of shit. Like, yeah. yeah, I guess it's... And it only gets worse. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. I, it, it's not that I can't watch it. it. I bet other people... For I bet for some people it's unwatchable. But I could watch it. It's His... just, you know, how much... Like, what am I even here for? Why am I even watching this? <laughs> it's just, His character it's should like just It's like a joke on me. Up. When you're watching it on real people, <laughs> it's it's a joke on the people... Yeah, the, like in the scene, yeah. and then the, also the comedian, because it's kind of like a secondhand embarrassment kind of thing. Like, oh my god, I can't believe mm-hmm. Sasha Baron Cohen and this this other guy are naked in this like uh, hotel conference room or whatever the fuck. Here it's yeah. just like, okay, it's actors on a set, like you said. It doesn't exactly. have that same yeah. kind of umph. And he wouldn't even it's need more to be a good us. writer like <laughs> like Sasha Baron Cohen for like Borat. You know, like those movies. All of the set pieces are strung together logically in a way where it's like so much better than what a prank movie deserves, right? Mm-hmm. So like yeah. Tom Green wouldn't even need to go that far. He could just have as much bullshit, uh, the same, literally the same plot, literally the same justifications for how things happen and where things go. But if the scenes were just filmed candidly with hidden cameras and real people Mm -hmm. it would save the entire movie you could have the exact same thing just real reactions and knowing that he's getting reactions out of people right like that Mm -hmm. that would save the entire movie it would be a fine okay movie it would not be nearly as polarizing i don't think yeah Mm -hmm. no you're right um i will say one one thread i did fairly consistently enjoy was just the interplay between him and his dad him and rip torn (laughs) That that did yeah. keep me going because it's just <laughs> he like hates him so much and the you know the sibling rivalry stuff as well with like the sure. car with number one son and oh yeah you're my number one son too and all this kind of dumb shit like but that that side of it worked for me more but yeah I can't with some of the gross that shit and how far it goes <laughs> it is weirdly nostalgic though that's what kept me going was yeah. like it was just reminding me of that <laughs> that era. <laughs> Yeah, it is for me because I watched say. it when I was younger. Yeah, but... okay. <laughs> I know what you mean. No, the it, soundtrack it really also is fucking me. like yeah, punk yeah, 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 skate, exactly. skate music. <laughs> it is like a time capsule for that yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah, just like the language they use and everything. It's all very <laughs> of its time. Yeah. Tom Green's career was of its time. His entire, <laughs> like, his entire yeah. success was of its time. Like, he did what he was doing at the exact right time where people were like, Oh, I like this new thing on cable. Yeah, yeah. Know? Like this guy is being weird. I'm gonna watch this, <laughs> and especially if kids watching, you know, like 
ha ha he's screaming says poo poo right <laughs> yeah <laughs> you don't need the layers of anti-humor to enjoy that as a child you can enjoy it at face value <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah all right what would you give it out of 10 i guess we talked longer yeah. about it than i thought considering it's like yeah it's just yeah, so dumb much ridiculous yeah <laughs> it's a difficult one to rate yeah um, i'm torn on a on a four or five four or five star uh sorry <laughs> no yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, out of ten two yeah. and a half stars i guess yeah <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's so good yeah. That yeah that's fine um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, you know what I can, i'll let the the sards decide what my rating is <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can yeah, interpret at, just like the movie out, out of 10 i'll give it an anti-rating of three out of ten so it's Wouldn't actually an anti rating be negatives <laughs> yeah whatever so it's actually 10 <laughs> or what is it uh one and a half yeah, yeah. negative so. 20 out of five <laughs> i'm giving it a four out of ten i don't think it's uh you know it's like it's like worse than average as a film even mm -hmm. though it is more digestible than i guess a lot of other movies it's more digestible than a five you know mm -hmm. The, it's, the it's lower you bad. get from a five, the more entertaining it is uh -huh. for me, anyway. It, it made me laugh more than I think I want to admit. That's why, like, I okay. give it a half. Yeah, yeah. But the, it's, the not like, it's not a good play movie. A big role in it. <laughs> it's not. <good. laughs> yeah, because it does have one of those kind of reputations where you're, if you haven't seen it and you don't know anything about Tom Green, the the expectation was that this is like one of the worst films ever. So I guess I was pleasantly surprised in a weird way that there actually was some stuff there that I'd like because mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. a lot of like comedies that are like so abysmal that I just cannot handle them, like your movie 43s and that sort of tier of stuff where there's just n there's nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. But there there is some stuff there to, to like. Yeah. It's pretty notorious. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of... Notorious movies. Apparently, uh, Southland Tales is getting the original cut on Blu-ray this month. Oh yeah, we, yeah we're I was reading that, that article. Uh -huh. Isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> would you rather watch <laughs> this than Southland Tales? Because I actually think I would yes. watch this over Southland Tales. Yeah, I think I would. Well, too. no, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have seen Freddy Got Fingered more times than Southland Tales both ironically and unironically at different points in my life, I guess. But mm -hmm. I'm very intrigued by this Southland Tales thing because, you know, it's the version that got the standing ovation at Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, right? I was confused so like, about what... that. I thought it was, like, booed. <laughs> it was oh, I booed. don't know. Maybe this article <laughs> yeah, is no, I have wrong. no idea. Because I thought he, like, he had, like, an unfinished version and he, like, prefaced that, like, it wasn't really done. <laughs> and oh that's what God. was shared. I... This <laughs> that's pretty See if funny. you can find anything. Okay, yeah, this article's just fucking wrong then. <laughs> Everywhere else is saying it was poorly received at Cannes and that's why it got cut. So maybe it got maybe it was one of the standing ovation and booed at the same times at Cannes because that actually <laughs> yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. They're clapping that it's over. Yeah. yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, the half the crowd awful. standing ovation, half the crowd booing, <laughs> or 100% of the crowd booing while they give a standing ovation, which I kind of like to imagine is the case. It's like the Blade Runner cut. It's going to totally fix the movie. It's going to make it they're gonna <laughs> yeah. get rid of the bad narration. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. Th it, this, this is the first one of these stupid, like, it fixes the movie cuts that mm -hmm. I feel like I might want to see out of curiosity, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Not that I think that it's possible that the movie will be good, after but it's like i just want to know what was there because like this hasn't been seen since its initial screening right i guess not no i don't think so how yeah. long was that original film though because i remember it dragging and dragging i don't think Eight i billion can hours? take 50 <laughs> yeah 15 more minutes added on top of that like i know some people love it but dude yeah <laughs> and you also have to read those okay, graphic it's... novels to understand i know yeah it, it's two hours 25 stupid. It's already yeah. two hours twenty five, so it's gonna make it. Nearly yeah, three so hours. maybe that'll be my deciding factor of saying no. You're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on that one. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Somebody else in the subreddit can tell us how it is. Yeah, yeah, because because they released the uh, Godfather three one like just before Christmas, didn't? Oh they? yeah. Mm -hmm. The Godfather. Oh my god. Like another one. That's a new thing now. These recuts. Somebody somebody told me the funniest fucking thing. What? So spoilers for the Godfather three. 
So the original title of The Godfather Part 3 was The Death of Michael Corleone, right? Mm-hmm. And so for the new cut, this is what somebody told me on like my Patreon hangout or whatever. For the new cut, they were like, oh, see, we're we're going to include the old title and be like, yeah, this is, you know, the implication, like this is how it's supposed to be sort of thing. But apparently at the end of the movie, they cut it before he actually died. So they, (laughs) they did like the opposite in both directions where it's like, he no (laughs) longer dies in the movie, but they have the title now death of Michael Corleone. (laughs) So (laughs) that's what I was told anyway. Yeah. (laughs) That's so funny. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Oh, All right, God. question time. We can. <laughs> yeah, I guess okay. so. Let's do some questions from the Sardonicast community. If you want to leave your own questions, head over to the Sardonicast subreddit where there'll be a suggestion thread. You can ask whatever you feel like. Big Blue Fool is going to ask one first. What is the angriest you've ever been at a film? Um, I mentioned Movie 43, and that's definitely up there for me, as, as well as like Disaster Movie. Um, just stuff like mm-hmm. that, of course, that like you can't avoid it, but. With more like, you know, bigger, you know, productions coming from like companies yeah. like Disney, like Ralph Breaks the Internet, um, I saw was like in the in the Reddit thread, like replied to this. And that is one where I was, I was like really angry and shocked. Really? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was like, no, this this can't, they can't do this. It's just the, the reference movie. Like every scene. Oh yeah, it's just a sequel, like a, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. The second okay, one. Yeah, the f- the first one. one's fine. The first one's absolutely fine. The the second one, um, yeah, it is just like just a bunch of random scenes just referencing like other Disney stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. It is so fucking bad. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, I That's would go uh, Haunting a Sharon Tate, Murder Nicole Brown Simpson. <laughs> like those really I awful see that. Daniel Farron's movies. <laughs> they're fucking terrible, tasteless. I know. You know like, yeah, they're just insufferable. Um, yeah. Megan's Missing... I watched that recently. Yeah, that's fucking. Oh yeah. Trash. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. There, there's like a total of zero redeemable qualities in that movie. Exactly. <laughs> Literally nothing about yeah. it is good. Yeah. Um, it's fucking weird. Michael Goy's fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could say that. There was a movie directed by John Favreau that came out in 2019. And I'm trying to remember the title of. <laughs> yeah, there's one that yeah, Lion King 2019. John really fucking. It makes uh-huh. me really angry. It makes me even angrier yeah, that I'm fair. like perpetually working on this review until the end of time, and it's never going to go away. And it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's this is this is my Caden Katard's per, uh, play. You know, this is this is my Synecdoche, New York. <laughs> Synecdoche, you know New York wasn't already my Synecdoche, New York. I'm passing the hour and a half mark. And I've yeah. made it to, I, I will admit that my productivity has not been as great as it could have been in the past like few months, but you know, a lot of weird shit has come up, but I'm back into yeah. the groove now. And yeah, the, it's probably going to be like three hours long or some shit like more than that. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm at the hour and a half mark and I don't feel like I've wasted any time whatsoever in the review. Like everything that I'm saying in there is like crucially important to like what needs to be communicated and i'm i haven't made it to the initial incident yet like so (laughs) mufasa is still alive dude (laughs) but i'm i'm just i'm just getting into the beginning of the be prepared uh, (laughs) at the hour and a half mark but i don't feel like i've wasted any time with it so that movie made you angry part of it it's made me a little little bit bit angry yeah maybe just a little 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 bit peeved just a little annoying you know (laughs) Yeah. No, I was thinking about the original Lion King. I, I definitely underrated it on the episode. Um, we <gasps> talked about it. I'm gonna admit it now, because I was oh, yeah. I was looking through a list of all the like uh, Disney, uh, you know, the the Renaissance movies, and I was thinking, hang on, yeah, it probably is like the strongest with the with the songs specifically. Like I kept like I know all the songs. I can hum them. They're so memorable. Yeah, and especially with that mm-hmm. 2019 one, like contrasting, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but you know, to to find the silver lining, John Favreau's Lion King 2019 is making me appreciate the original in ways that I didn't before. Yeah, <laughs> because sometimes you need to see something do do it in an absolutely terrible wrong way, and to break mm-hmm. that down and be like, okay, well what made the original work in this scene and then you start to realize like oh so like this is 
this is really logical how they wrote this and how the characters' emotions played off of each other in this scene, how the information was delivered in, in the way that they wrote it and logistically, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm finding like all these like, you know, I'm, I'm appreciating the original in ways that I yeah, didn't yeah. previously, um, yeah. which I think is also, a, you know, important thing to communicate. So, so yeah, it's uh, already like fucking as long as my old boy review, but I haven't even made it to the fucking first third of the movie yet. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just fucking, I haven't made it to the second act. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> It'll be good, though. It'll be fun. Let's do this one from Sky TV is fucking shit. What is your favorite black and white movie? Oh, well. My answer is probably it's a movie I rewatched. I think in the first quarantine, um, the man who wasn't there, I, uh, we su I suggested it for a oh, yeah. Solana cast episode. Earlier. Yeah. I I love that movie. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's black and white with the noir stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, adore that. Yeah, looks great. I love the look of that movie. I'd probably mm. go Racerhead as my favorite. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, one. use of black and white in that is great. Makes the movie feel very dreamy. Yeah, it wouldn't work the same in color. Natively black and white, probably. Like, I don't know, Paths of Glory. But if we're talking about filmed in color and then post-converted to black and white, then, I don't know, the White Ribbon. Mm -hmm. White Ribbon's a good one. One old, one recent. Yeah. Did you see the White Ribbon? Yeah. White Ribbon's How great. recently did you? It's been a year or so. But okay. Yeah. yeah, I just don't it, remember it, knowing that you saw it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I might have forgotten. Yeah, it's it's been I a while since I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> uh, Elephant Man 2, which is also David Lynch. Um, yeah, I've yet to see yeah, that one. Actually. That's a great, oh, yeah, that's I need a great to see film that. Yeah. as well. Uh, Raging Bull by Scorsese. That's an iconic mm -hmm. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love all three of those. <laughs> those are good black and white movies. Half of Memento. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Half of Memento. The alternate cut of Parasite. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot oh, of good yeah. uses of black and white, like brief. Like uh, I think Kill the Bill cut of the mist. Has, has good black and white. Oh yeah, yeah that's a great mist. one. Yeah, that's it a great one. It fixes the movie. <laughs> it makes the movie better. <laughs> it makes it look much better. Yeah, uh, but Kill yeah, Bill has like crazy. some moments of black and white. I believe that was like my first exposure, like or at least when I noticed black and white in like a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. I think Tarantino uses it well. Yeah, I went down that rabbit hole of watching uh, Tarantino getting angry at people uh, on YouTube. It's pretty he's, funny. Like, <laughs> getting Starbucks and like just for people harassing him. And he's, yeah, he's such why a is he? Dude. Yeah, he's like acting like one of the characters in his movies. It's like, why are you threatening to like yeah. beat up this random guy? Like, I get he's a jerk, but you could just fucking walk away. He's, yeah, he, he reminds me of like Jim Carrey when he goes too far into a role. Like, uh -huh. it's, it's really weird but it's real life it like he's like a character yeah, in real, real life like <laughs> swinging his yeah, fists at people too nutty sorry too nutty says what movies do you currently give a 10 out of 10 that you do not think will hold up on a rewatch so I don't know if you guys have any that come to your mind. I've got a couple um, I went through earlier. Hmm. Okay, I'd have to dig into my fucking past here. Yeah. I have the Woody Allen film Blue Jasmine as a 10. I think it's a really good movie. I don't think it's a 10, though. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't have it as a 10. I was 18 when I saw Life of Pi as well, and I rated that oh, a 10. No. Yeah, that's down <laughs> my yeah. I, I change watches. my ratings all the time. Yeah, I had Life of Pi as a 10. I lowered that Wow. One. Yeah, yeah, I think that would go down. I, I lowered gravity a lot. I used to have gravity at like a nine, and then I've lowered it to like a six, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. First one showing up when I organized by ratings. There's a, a internet show called I Hate Everything that I rated a ten. I might bring that <laughs> down later. Six. <laughs> <laughs> six out of ten. Yeah, let me like. Oh my god. Yeah, half. There's like my tens are either completely legitimate or completely ironic. There's like yeah, a fucking Life is Strange YouTube fan movie that I rated a 10 on here that's <laughs> mm -hmm. really bad. Derek Savage Crime Show I have at a 10. <laughs> Samurai Cop I have at a 10. Nice. I don't have, I don't have any ironic yeah, ratings. Ralph the Movie Maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ironic. I don't have any of those uh, ironic ratings. I only do... I, fuck you, Adam. 
I, I, I only I only do like non ironic. So like all those movies I gave half star, even though I love them. I have our those podcast are hilarious. as a ten. I have my own show as a ten. Okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I think I fixed most of the ten when I was younger things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see any is sticking out as particularly bad right now. Maybe American Psycho. Maybe I'll rewatch that and give it a nine. I don't know. I think it's pretty great, though. I like that movie yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. Maybe Kid with the Bike. Maybe I'll give that a nine in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like close. A lot of people give me shit for giving a 10 for Roman Polanski's The Ghost Writer. I thought it was really great, but I don't know. Maybe I'll watch that again and give it a nine or something. Mm. Mm -hmm. Controversial dude, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I don't think that that's why be. people give me shit over it, though. I think people just say oh, that really? it's like really bland i don't know i thought it was really well shot yeah i've seen that film like a long time ago i don't really remember it <laughs> that much mm -hmm. yeah yeah we'll see mm -hmm. i need to see more polanski anyway yeah i guess that's it. Okay. baby is great yeah that's a good one we had some good ones in there hey critic leave that wall alone Major <laughs> says uh <laughs> What is your opinion on film titles that use only one extremely common word, i.e. sing, music, soul, run, us, her, etc.? I for one think it's a bit silly and self-important. It's also pretty annoying to search for these movies on Google, as you most <laughs> likely have to write movie after the title. I agree. I think mm -hmm. her is it a, kind of an annoying title. It... <laughs> the thing <laughs> like all those but, you know, but you're to when you say it. the it's like almost not the same though right there's yeah. so many that start with the yeah the yeah. does change Two words. it yeah. i personally find it more annoying when a movie is remade and they keep the same title like the ghostbusters remake so now when or you like search ghostbusters <laughs> yeah or like the thing where they, yeah exactly where now when you search like an imdb the ghostbusters thing. it's like the 20 16 version or yeah the lion king that. Mm -hmm. or the lion, lion king, king same yeah, thing. or jungle mm -hmm. book or any of them um i don't have an issue with one word titles i will say that when i hear the title her i think like h-u-r-r -R, and i find that silly but i love the movie <laughs> i think it's, awesome. it's like my favorite movie of the 2010s her yeah, i love the her. movie too her it's just it can work really well though like like parasite i think that's a, parasite, a great name burning for that movie. Mm -hmm. Koyani right. Skatsi, mm -hmm. Cache, fuck, like there's a billion that mm -hmm. work really well. I don't know. I I don't take any issue with one word titles. Yeah, it's just adaptation. Yeah, it work for the brilliant movie. title. That's yeah. a great title. Yeah, when it makes sense with the movie, I guess when it's like M Night's old, we'll have to wait and see. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> oh, is that the title it. of his new yeah, movie? Yeah, like a, like a one syllable yeah. word, like her. Yeah, it's called like, old. It's, or you like? Have you seen the movie Her? You know, or have you seen her? It's a weird it, thing it's, to it's say. Hard, yeah, her, it's weird to but say. But I like the right. title regardless. I like the title, but yeah, it it's encapsulates just a really good movie, what so. it's about. Mm -hmm. right? I get what the guy's saying in the question. Yeah. Um, someone replied to it saying that a YouTuber sell specs theorized that film studios maybe want to push their brand by doing this. So whenever you type in the How? generic title in the search bar, you also have to write whatever company it is, like DreamWorks is home, Disney's Tangled, and so forth. I guess my counterpoint to that would be, I actually usually search like the the title and then the year it came out. That normally brings the results without saying yeah. the studio. So I don't know about that. But yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I I do agree that like as a marketing decision. Naming your film a very common word <laughs> is probably a bad idea because, like, it's just going to get buried. There's a um, film by Pablo Larraín, if I pronounce it properly. It's got Gael Garcia Bernal. It's called No, just N-O. And it's really good, <laughs> but I don't know how anybody's yeah. going to find it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. it's fucking, yeah. Uh, the, the <laughs> there's there's a triple X, which... Uh, if you search for that, you're just going to find porn, which makes the movie untorrentable. You will never find a torrent of that movie because you're only going to find porn. <laughs> Damn. Didn't think about that. <laughs> it's anti-piracy measure. <laughs> Triple X. Uh, yo, 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 Bega has an obligatory one we should probably answer. What are some of the films you're looking forward to most in 2021? Oh, Cool. Well, I haven't seen Minari yet, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. I don't mm -hmm. know if that counts this year or next year. 
but there's no way for me to see it right now. <laughs> so I'm looking yeah. forward. Oh, actually, technically we're in 2021 now. So what I meant to say was last year, this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, technically. Yeah, if any of these do I come out, I I mean, it, Light Night in Soho, is that what it's called? Last Night in Soho? Last Night in Soho. Last night. Yeah, that yeah. one I'm looking forward to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. that comes out. If it's a, I don't know if it's going to be like comedic or I think it's definitely a horror movie of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, it was supposed to be out last year. How... Yeah. Oh, was... really? It was that one that was pushed, yeah. yeah. I'm sure yeah. a lot of the films that are going to wind up coming out are going to be like that. But... I'm really looking forward Chaos to Chaos Walking. Easy. <laughs> Chaos Walking, yeah. <laughs> Even if that might not get released next year. It might get released the following It might year. get pushed again. <laughs> might get they pushed might just again. push it to fucking January 2022. Until the world ends. Yeah. They might try and stealth release it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, just dump it on VOD. I mean, at this point. What's weird is Edgar Wright also has a documentary coming out the same year. I forget what it's called. It's like a music documentary or something. We got Sia's movie, music. We oh, yeah. get to see if how much of a clusterfuck dumpster fire that is, or if it's just <laughs> boring and fine. Apparently, um, Peter Jackson's doing another documentary in a <gasps> similar style, um, but it's about the Beatles. Like an unused, nice. like unseen footage of cool. them recording Let It Be, I think. So that's really oh. interesting to me. Okay, cool. Yeah. There's uh, Dune. I don't know. Dune's mm -hmm. going right? to be great. I'm kind of curious about the, the Suicide Squad. James Gunn's. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I mean, kind of it could only go up him. from here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You definitely. No matter what, yeah. it will be an improvement. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I mean. Yeah, I I think he's able to, you know, em embody character through like the studio systems still. So, I'm I'm curious how that's going to turn out. Uh, the Snyder Cut. It's I'm looking forward to, to that. Looking forward to. Yeah. Looking forward Snyder to Snyder Cut. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> Snyder Cut. <laughs> it should be out soon. There was all this fucking hubbub about uh, Gaspar Noé's Irreversible doing a reversed cut. Oh yeah. Like mm -hmm. a, and I looked up articles on it recently, and I was like, "Isn't this wasn't this supposed to come out in 2020?" And I saw no yeah. updates for it; just a bunch of articles saying it would come out in 2020. And then it's like, "Where is it? I don't know where the fuck it is. I don't know what happened to it." Oh, weird. I would like to see it, I guess, but like, weird. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything else on. Mm. He's got he's got his other movie too, Lux Eterna. I want to see that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's a. Uh... The Many Saints of Newark, I'm curious how that's going to turn out. It's like the Sopranos mm -hmm. prequel yeah. movie. Um, it is written by, oh, yeah. what's his name, David Chase. So I have some faith. I did see. I looked up who the director was, and it, I think it's the Game of Thrones, one of the Game of Thrones showrunner guys. So mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> I bet it'll be we'll pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it'll the, be awesome. As yeah. long as Chase is there, yeah. I, yeah, I, I have faith it's an HBO thing. So mm -hmm. We got a new... Andrew Dominic movie uh, called Blind. This is the director of Assassination of Jesse Ga James and also uh, Killing Them Softly and yes. cool. Chopper, I think. Another one. I haven't seen that one, though. Got a new Paul Schrader coming out. Who knows what that will be like? It's called The Coward Counter. It's got Oscar Isaac and Willem Dafoe in it. That's cool. We got a oh, fucking nice. Yorgos Lanthimos movie coming out. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Untitled National Opera Project. I don't know what that is, but Emma Stone's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's assume it's 2021. And then uh, fucking mystery guitar man Joe Penn has got a new movie coming out, supposedly, called Stowaway. Got Anna Kendrick, Tony Collette. So I'm interested to see what that's like, because his uh, film Arctic was really very competent and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. That should be cool. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a bunch of other shit that will come out, but... Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, that's a fair amount, a chunky yeah. amount to look forward to. Many Saints in New York, yeah. That should be a good one. I didn't even think of that. And that is directed by Alan Taylor, who directed Terminator Genesis and Thor The Dark World. <laughs> but I bet it'll be good. Oh shit. There's yeah. a <laughs> there's a Nicolas Cage movie. Let me see if I can remember what this is. Or is it is. another one? <laughs> oh, it's uh Prisoners of the Ghost Land. Oh my god! Um, it's premiering at Sundance in less than a month. Nice, and I'm approved, and so I'll Who's try to see it. it. It's the director of Suicide Club <laughs> and Love Exposure. So like these weird Japanese movies. Yeah, anti. -porno. And they've got Nicolas Cage now 
Prisoners of the Ghost Land. Action oh, right. horror thriller is what it's being advertised as. So okay. that could be interesting. I love kind yeah. of where his career's going right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like better than Keanu <laughs> right now. I mean, yeah, in my enjoyment, I guess. Yeah, in your opinion. Well, speaking of Keanu, um, we have a question from Goosey McGooseface 2, who says, I was curious if you guys have played Cyberpunk 2077 and oh. what your views are if you have. Also, do you think CD Projekt Red has lost all credibility? And if so, can they call themselves back? This is, of course, referencing the uh, the state of the game. Because I I've tried That's playing funny. it a few times. Every time I go into the menu to like tinker with the settings, the game like freezes. So I've just given up. So what are you playing on? Um, on Xbox. Um, so that's probably why. Oh. Xbone. Uh, no, the Series X. Series X. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have a yeah, new gen freezes. console and it's still being shit. Wow. That's yeah, nice. yeah. It's wow. My brother's like playing it on a PS4. <laughs> he says oh it's God. broken as fuck, but he likes the story enough that he's just keep going, you know, going <laughs> on with it. Yeah, I'd rather I'm, just wait. Um, I can wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing on PC. It's running yeah. okay, but yeah, there's a lot of issues, like uh, textures popping in, people popping in, cars. Uh, yeah, like uh, f- lagging, the frame rate goes down. Mm-hmm. Tons of issues like that. Yeah, I played it on PC. I beat it. I did not do a whole lot of side quests because I wasn't invested enough into the world to want to. Mm. I thought the story was fine. There were some things about it that I liked. Keanu Reeves did not do a great job acting in it, but people will (laughs) convince themselves that he did because they like him. And yeah, the um, it just it's it felt like a very wasted opportunity, especially just immediately after playing that game after i beat it and just being like ah fuck it i'm just going for the ending right now like i'm not going to spend a lot of time in this universe sort of thing i started playing yakuza zero which is just so (laughs) much fun and it reminded me like wow you can have kind of like an open world game but you're you can also do fun things in it and it reminded Mm -hmm. me that games could be fun still (laughs) Um, because i because before i played cyberpunk i i had a, a very bad like three in a row, I was playing the new Don't Nod game, Twin Mirror, which is broken as fuck. I played Hunt mm. Down the Freeman. I played some other bad shit. Like, I don't mm. remember. It was just like bad, 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 bad in a row that I forgot that good games existed. And so when I played <laughs> Cyberpunk, it wasn't like the worst experience. I was just kind of like lukewarm, like meh. But then I, I, as soon as I beat Cyberpunk, I was like, games can be good when playing Yakuza 0, so... Yeah, I just have no motivation in Cyberpunk to want to explore and want to p- pay attention to things, you know, to yeah. uh, just the universe well. is so <laughs> lacking, which just sucks so much because they created Is it this. lacking because of the writing or just the way the game like is just fucked? The but... amount of shit you can do in the game is so limited, right? If you're right. going to have a Cyberpunk game, I want to be able to like show up at some random building and play fucking Cyberpool, you know? Like mm-hmm. GTA five had so many shit, so, so much shit that you could do independently of the story missions. And although there are a bunch of side missions in cyberpunk, I mean, like the gist of it that I got and I didn't play a whole lot of them, but like they were really repetitive and a lot of the same thing. Like the, the universe that was there didn't really feel real, you know, mm-hmm. it didn't feel real. It felt it didn't feel just alive, so lacking quite like yeah, the and Rockstar like, games do. Like playing Red Dead Redemption or even Ghost of Tsushima, mm-hmm. like this year, there's a there's like you go anywhere and just stuff would come up. Yeah. and you know, it felt more organic how people would approach you with missions than it does in this. It does feel kind of yeah. dated, more like kind of Fallout or Skyrim Super or dated. something. Um, but I, I still Witcher? like it. I, I like the yeah, world. It it's like, like Witcher, a, I guess. I, I like the world <laughs> just fine. I, I I thought it was cool. I like the graphics and all that. Uh, John, the John Wick, whatever Johnny Silverhand, <laughs> that's his name. That that was so oh. thrown in. I felt like that was just know, d- right? didn't even need to be in the game. Really, the parts Big where Chungus. I was playing as him. Oh really? Yeah, and his character's so one dimensional. Like he's just always oh, yeah. aggressive. So is is the choice thing not in there? Because uh, like The Witcher Three was all about like the choices and how it would like change the game based on. Your decisions does cyberpunk not do that not really mm-hmm. it doesn't really feel like bit. it <laughs> yeah you can approach you All can right. approach missions differently you know you could do stealthy or not there's definitely points yeah, where not i was like i went on like this 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 base or whatever on a rooftop and i talked to the guy there's like different things you can do you can either 
like kill him and take his gun or you could do this kind of competition where you do like target right. practice and then you get the gun that way if you come in first place so there's like different approaches and but it didn't feel like the story was that like it's not like until dawn or something where the narrative would go so far one direction yeah yeah it didn't feel mm -hmm. quite like that i was expecting something okay. a little more like i would affect the story more but not really it's just kind of dated <laughs> it's more like polish really? it looks cool it's fun to shoot things but yeah that's it's not much going yeah. on mechanics wise it feels incredibly dated mm -hmm, a little bit the shooting mechanics feel fine and fluid it's like i'm playing borderlands or something like it's it's fun to yeah. shoot things mm -hmm. but what's crazy about it is like they have all of this extra shit that you can upgrade like you can you have the they call them bear arms and stuff. And you can do like, you know, if you go to the ripper dock or whatever, you can get like double jump and like super blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you can soup all this shit out. I beat the entire game without doing any of that or ever feeling like I was compelled to <laughs> or incentivized to. All right. That's I literally just because you have this like little health pack inhaler thing that you can just press at any moment. So my health would go down and go, I have asthma, excuse me. And then my health <laughs> would go back up. And I didn't really feel like I was challenged. I kind of just breezed through the entire game and I played it on normal. But like, you know, there were some parts mm -hmm. where I died a couple of times, but I literally never had to upgrade any of that shit. <laughs> so, oh, sure. And I beat I do, the entire game. I do actually game consider that a positive like, that. I guess there's no difficulty curve, but I do like that you can approach you should it feel any way. Right, I do like you can approach it that, any though. way you want. Like you can go throughout the whole game without killing anyone or upgrading anything, and you could like you could get through it. <laughs> you know, I, I do yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't I, I seem it's pretty ready, glitchy. Like it wasn't and... ready. Yeah, the glitches yeah. are really bad. It, it makes it almost unplayable. But <laughs> it takes you out of the atmosphere uh -huh. if uh -huh. it had any to begin with <laughs> exactly I had which to turn it did my settings i will down. admit but like mm -hmm. it's just like you have this universe and you have like all these different cars and there's like people around and like you're supposed to believe that like this is a a place right but it's like you're just so limited in terms of like what you can experience in the universe yeah you know i just mm -hmm. i didn't feel like it was really all that sandboxy of a game yeah yeah, they clearly mismanaged expectations because they made it seem like this was going to be like the next jump sort of thing, like Red Dead Two yeah. sort of style. But it's not quite. Uh, Maybe seem graphically, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just going to wait like a year and a half and probably be like <laughs> really good by then. Might as well. <laughs> good call. Yeah, even even like with everything, you know, if everything's running properly, it's just there's so many things that are like built into like the core of the mm -hmm. game that I just like there's no way you can make the game great in my opinion even if you patch everything right like the mm -hmm. way that the the police AI operate is just so stupid like they all of the AI in. in the game is awful they, they literally, literally spawn up. behind you they yeah, teleport behind you no when you like, commit a crime and it's so frustrating oh. and annoying uh -huh. and it seems like they do way more damage than the the normal goons like I can take down 10 goons but when there's like three police officers around me I can't take them out they fucking yeah they take me down real quick I don't I don't understand how it like works and then they just pop in yeah behind you I was starting to get into the game when they were sort of like doing the initial incident plot thing and Keanu Reeves gets introduced and whatever. I'm like, oh, this is starting to get a bit interesting. And then, like, I just assumed the game was, like, really long. I was playing through, like, the story missions and shit. And then, till, you know, people just told me in chat, I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, you're getting close to the end of the game. I'm like, what? I thought this was, like, the first act or something. And it's not like the game was super short. It still took me, like, I don't know, 17 hours or something. And I did, I did mess around and f fuck around and do a bunch of other stuff in the game. Not a whole lot of side missions, but, like, like, I don't know. It's weird that I played through all of the main story missions and still felt starved for, like, some sort of experience. And perhaps maybe I was unwilling to find out, but, like, maybe, like, the whole experience of the game that I was supposed to get out of it was hidden somewhere in the optional side quests or something. But you shouldn't design your game in that way if that's the case. I'm I'm yeah. a little unwilling to believe that that, like... If I played through all the side quests, I would like it more. I'm I don't believe that. So, yeah, it, it was relatively inoffensive for the most part. But just by the end of it, I was like, there was this gigantic hole, you know, <laughs> where I was like, mm -hmm. man, <laughs> something could have been there. Like I was expecting to get something out of it by the end, but it was just, I was just so yeah. uninterested no, that I took the shortcut it, ending. It was like there was one ending mm -hmm. where you just. You know, it's either two hours longer or or it isn't, and I just decided it wasn't. 
Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm done with this. I'm going to play Yakuza. <laughs> it's crazy so many people can't even play this game who bought it. That The fact that you can't even play it, Alex, is crazy. I, I, I feel yeah. bad. I'm impressed that my brother is playing it on a PS4. Like, that's nuts. Yeah, I could not do that. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen, like, some of the videos? Like, it's hilarious how it yeah. looks. <laughs> They're really laggy. My brother's doing it, too. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how. All right. All right. Yeah, I guess that's that. I Keanu. That, that's about Keanu it. Keanu Reeves. For, one more yeah. question? Yeah. You want to do one sure, more? Sure, we can do one I've got, more. I've got yeah. a quick one, right? From okay. Brown Boy J. Have any of you guys ever tried Spotted Dick? <laughs> What? I don't know what that is. Is that, is that, like a, a, is that a snack? Thing? It's a British uh, like dessert. Oh, really? Spotted dick. Oh. It's got suet in it. Like that delicious suet. It's got like <laughs> suet. <laughs> Sounds fucking gross. <laughs> What's it called again? Spotted dick. Spotted Google, dick. Google a picture of it. I'm looking at at it right yeah. now. Oh, it actually looks pretty yummy. <sighs> hmm. It's like suet a little rum is cake. The raw hard fat of beef or mutton found around the loins and kidneys okay i'm learning what suet is <laughs> i've always found suet like so gross <laughs> yeah have you had yeah. uh meat faggots um no no i actually haven't all right I'll yeah try that when i'm in the uk at some point <laughs> yeah we got some quirks over here that's for sure Fuck. Yeah. spotted dick very interesting. Oh, it's a it's a pudding. Is what they call it on Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Spotted is a reference. Is it just like to bread pudding? I like bread pudding. Yeah, yeah. It's called spotted um, dick. D- we <laughs> have bread pudding though as well, and that's okay. actually nice. <laughs> okay, this one's just bad. In my opinion, yeah, it's not. The I was greatest. looking up why it's called spotted dick. Mm-hmm. The spotted is and? like a reference to the dried fruit part, and then dick it also means dog. <laughs> Or something. <laughs> okay. well, that's widely used for pudding. Dog. I think dog, it, no, dog. I think it as, says also <laughs> known as spotted dog, but I don't think it says that dick is another word for dog, right? Oh yeah, it's spotted dog. <laughs> Where dialect <laughs> terms widely used for pudding from the same etymology as dough. Okay. So spotted Glossary dough. Of local terms described dick plain pudding. That makes sense. Okay. It's like spotted uh, dough. Whatever. Yeah. So it's called spotted <laughs> dick. <laughs> Leopard print. That penis. makes more sense. You should just call it spotted dough. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's time to change. Pudding. It's the spotted part's Whatever okay. Like, it's just the dick. It's clearly like currant <laughs> cake or something. God damn it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Railway cake is another word for it here I see on Wikipedia. Why not that? That sounds like so normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that does sound better. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <And> that's, <laughs> that's it for questions. That's again. spotted dick. I'm going to try some Thanks, when Brown I come Boy to the Jay. UK. And uh, yeah, I guess it's time for a recommendation. It's yours, right? I believe so. Mm-hmm. And uh, last, for us. well, last episode, I was like a bit disappointed that you only knew of Mathieu Amalric as a Bond villain. So I'm going <laughs> to recommend The Diving Bell and The Butterfly which neither of you have seen, unless you've seen it between last episode and now. No. Right? Nope, awesome movie. I have not seen that. Okay. And awesome. yeah, I consider it to be like a must-watch so- sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I was really struggling with uh, recommending something I've already seen or something that I haven't already seen, but I was like, if you guys haven't seen Diving Bell and the Butterfly, I guess I have to No, I haven't. Right. And it's on my watch list, too. <laughs> this so, looks awesome, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Perfect. I will. Okay. Th- yep. Yeah, 2007. Mm-hmm. Directed by Julian Schnabel. I don't know if I pronounced that properly or not. but And also, Laura Obiol. <laughs> oh. I did not know she directed it also. Very nice. Oh. She fucking Wicked. co-directed I, Daniel Blake with Ken, Ken Loach. Holy shit. Oh, really? Yeah. I gotta well, look her up. All right. Yeah, if you don't want to be spoiled for The Diving Bell and the Butterfly 2007 film, watch it before next episode. These episodes come out. Every two weeks. Although, you can listen to them early as they're edited Whoa. if you sign up for premium. Sardonicast.com, $2 a month. Or patreon.com slash sardonicast. Also, we got merch. This show is funded by you, our listeners. It is a crowdfunded show. We don't do all these nonsense 
<laughs> little ads in our show, you know? We don't mm-hmm. do we don't talk about bull shavers and yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We it's just like want PBS. the content. And We're so supported it's like, by yeah, it's you. like PBS. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like Tom <laughs> Green's <laughs> early public access show. <laughs> yeah. That's what he did. Yeah, he was he literally had like a public access show before oh. his uh, MTV thing. That's how you got oh, discovered really? back in the day, yeah. yeah. That was he before made, like, YouTube. 50 yeah. of them. Oh, uh, public access was so fucking yeah. those shows are so bad. That's where like Scorch yeah. comes from. <laughs> There's one called Stairway <laughs> to Stardom. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, uh you know, they pick up it's like one of those uh variety talent shows, you know? Mm-hmm. But they've just found whoever they could on the fucking street. It's like in New York. (laughs) (laughs) And it was so fucking funny how bad it was. You guys could look that up. Okay. If anybody does want to check out any of the Tom Green show, like I said, watch it while doing something else. But uh, (laughs) after (laughs) rewatching some of it, I would say episode two is actually pretty good. It's got some good stuff in it if you want to start somewhere. Anyway, thanks for watching. Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks, everyone. First podcast of 2021. Oh, my God. Bye-bye. Bye.